We are live in the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, where the number three team in the country, the Hurricanes, take on number 17 Louisville, a team of big dreams. In a society of labels, Louisville wears one of football's newest, PCS Buster. It's for teams that don't have big houses but have big dreams. A southpaw slinger named Stefan leads an offense that scores 43 a game, and their defense has only given up a touchdown per. The result, four games, four wins, and tonight the ultimate shot at respect. You know, for all the stars now in the pros and all the questions about their quarterback, teams would dream to be in Miami's position. The Canes are number three in the nation. Big play players are starting to emerge, and their suffocating defense has given up one touchdown all year. Two undefeated teams. Only one leaves the Orange Bowl that way tonight. One of the great entries in the sport. On come the Canes to the Orange Bowl field. A crowd pushing 60,000 settling in here in a little Havana. And no better setting for a football game. It may not have luxury suites, beautiful chair back seats, but it has something you can't manufacture. Character and history. The Orange Bowl in Miami is set for Miami and Louisville. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Jill Arrington. Well, we talked about Brock Bruin, and let's go back to the last game Miami played before the Georgia Tech game. Larry Coker essentially called out his coach. Uh, call that his quarterback. He had 99 yards passing against Houston, and Larry said, you got to play better. Well, he had three touchdowns, so Kirk, maybe we're seeing Brock Berlin pass another hurdle. Well, I think you're touching on something that makes Brock Berlin a special quarterback. Forget about the stats for a second. His attitude through adversity. They've benched him. They've threatened him. Even last year, he's maintained a positive outlook. He's coming off one of his better games last week against Georgia Tech, where he was able to throw the ball downfield. Now, tonight against Louisville, Louisville is going to crowd the line of scrimmage. They're determined to take Frank Gore and Tyrone Moss out of the game and then try to get Berlin in the third and long and then that's when they can bring their blitz package but Brock Berlin is the key for Miami tonight in this game let's take a look at the other side of the ball the University of Louisville averages over 43 points a ball game and they do it with wonderful balance listen to this they run for an average of 246 pass for an average of 257 per game that's the best in the nation they use two quarterbacks and they got two different kind of quarterbacks number 17 Stefan LaForce is a left-handed rollout kind of an athlete then they got a freshman Brian Brom six foot four number 12 the number one high school quarterback in the nation last year both of them complete 75 percent of the passes I know Miami's a great football team and a great place here Mike but let me tell you something Louisville is the best offensive team by far the Miami Hurricanes have played this year for more on the best defense that Louisville has faced all year, let's visit on the field with Jill Arrington. Jill. Well, Mike, Miami's defense is in full domination mode. They're the only secondary in the nation that hasn't allowed a passing touchdown. Now, that group is led by senior cornerback on trail roll, and he's having a spectacular season. He says every game, their expectation is a shutout. They don't want to let anyone in the end zone, period. Coach Randy Shannon, their defensive coordinator, said this defense plays hungrier than any he's coached in the past couple of years, and that's saying a lot. Mike, back to you. Yeah, considering all the players, Jill, that have gone on to the National Football League. Well, seems like no matter what time of year you come to Miami, the weather is always a factor, and there's always a chance of showers. It's at 40% tonight. The humidity is up there. That always is a positive in Miami's favor. They live with this kind of weather on a regular basis. A couple of interesting coaches in the matchup here tonight. Of course, Larry Coker took over for Butch Davis, who did a great job rebuilding this program. Larry Coker has lost three games here, 39-3. and three. Only the legendary Walter Camp <laughs> has had a better 42-game start. Now, on the other side, a coach who certainly his profile is not the same, 43-year-old Bobby Petrino, he returns to the state of Florida. He was an assistant coach with the Jacksonville Jaguars after a stint as a Louisville assistant. Won nine games last year, the most by U of L first-year head coach. He's the son of a coach, Bob Sr. He played for him out in Helena, Montana at Carroll College. So coaching has been in this guy's blood since he was on the sidelines as a ball boy in second grade out in Montana. Miami won the toss, deferred the option to the second half. So Louisville will get the ball first. They would have gotten the ball first no matter what. Bobby Petrino told me 
earlier this week, if we win the toss, we want the ball. We want our offense out there. And that means you're going to see the second-best scoring team in the country against the top defensive scoring unit in college football. That is Brian Monroe, the sophomore punter, who also handles the kickoff for Miami with Roderick Clark and Lionel Gates back. Two undefeated. One will leave that way here tonight. Off we go on College Football Thursday. Gates from the goal line. Lionel Gates still at the 18-yard line. Good tackle by Glenn Cook. He's going to get a start at linebacker here tonight. Stephon LaForce, the senior quarterback, comes from an interesting background at home. And his brother are all hearing impaired. They cannot hear. Stephon was the only one in the family who was able to hear. Thus, he became a leader. He matured early. It's one of the reasons he's been able to handle two very great athletes coming in at the quarterback spot here at Louisville and still maintain his job as the star. Opening drive start from the 18. And Miami jumped off right away, so let's see if they were brought off by Louisville. These are Conference USA officials. That's Louisville's conference for this final year before they move to the Big East. Bobby Petrino talked about being aggressive and taking it to Miami. Obviously, mistakes and environment will factor in here early on. Roger Clark in motion. LaFour's sack at the two by Baraka Atkins, the sophomore from Sarasota. Thank you, Coach. This is a key factor in tonight's game. Louisville, Stephon LaFords like to get the ball to the outside. The Miami defensive ends are going to be, they're going to have tunnel vision tonight, locking in and preventing LaFords or Brom from having the ability to get outside to break the chain. The interesting thing to me is when the Miami went offside, that was exactly the same play that Louisville called before that. Second and a quarter of the field. That is part of the stadium. Students sit down here. Eric Shelton, one yard, third at a quarter of the field. Bud Light starting lineups. Shelton, 296 yards, averages seven per. A lot of receivers. J.R. Russell is from Florida. Broderick Clark, Joshua Titch played on the Louisville basketball team. As for the offensive line, Jeremy Darvo, I call your attention to the right tackle 74 because they're missing Renardo Foster, who had started 17 games. He's out for the season with an injury. Lafue, Spitz, Rabatine, and Quarterman, the rest of the guys up front. Third and 25. Run Shelton. He'll get some, but not enough. And Louisville will have to kick it away. The Miami defense gets a three and out. Why don't we introduce you to them before the next time they come out on the field? Up front, Baraka Atkins and Orion Harris are stepping up their play along with Santonio Thomas and Thomas Harrell. In the linebacking court, Glenn Cook gets the start for Leon Williams with Roger McIntosh and Tavares Good, who's been off the charts the last couple of games. Antra Roll could be a top five NFL pick on the corner with Kelly Jennings. Anthony Reddick gets a start. He's a freshman, blocked a punt against Houston, and Greg Three, not talked about much, but has been as good as anybody back there. Brent Moody to kick it. Devin Hester back to receive. Took a couple back against Louisiana Tech in this building earlier this year. High kick, bad kick. 20 yards. And Miami will take over in fabulous field position. <clears throat> Everything you wanted, not happening thus far for Bobby Petrino. Here comes Brock Berlin, senior out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Started his career at Florida. Started a BCS bowl game for Florida. Transferred here to Miami. Sat a year behind Ken Dorsey. Took over this team. He's only lost a couple of games. You wouldn't know it if you hang around here because people talk about everything Brock Berlin does not do. He is 15-2 and two as a starter. Only three college players are better than that right now. First and 10, they take over officially at the Louisville 39. 
Motion by Darnell Jenkins to toss to Frank Gore. He stopped for a loss of two by the strong safety, J.T. Haskins. Hope you saw the pregame, the great feature on Gore coming back from two ACL injuries. Caleb Humphrey now the fullback. Kyle Kobe is out for the season with a shoulder. Leggett and Parrish are the receivers. Kevin Everett, a very good tight end. Up front, Rashad Butler comes in for Eric Winston. Out for the season, hurt his knee. Tony Tella, Joel Rodriguez, Tyler McMeans, and Chris Myers. Myers, a three-year starter on the right tackle spot. Second and 12, Berlin has the tight end, Greg Olson. The Richard freshman takes it inside the 20. First and 10, Miami at the Louisville 12. Darnell Jenkins through the block. The play, game 29. Kirk, beautiful play call, wasn't it? Dan Werner, fake run, bootleg right early. And I'll tell you one thing, that Olsen come across. They could use him at Notre Dame. He's a transfer yeah. from, to Notre Dame. But I like the first play call by Warner. That was a good one, Kirk. Great play call because yeah. Louisville's so aggressive. They're trying to chase down the ball carrier. Brandon Johnson, the outside linebacker, got out of position. Olsen motion one way, then came back into the flat. And Darnell Jenkins, sensational block downfield to open that play up for Olsen. That sophomore Jenkins at the bottom of the screen. The early go by Miami is going to cost the Canes five here. 68 on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Tyler McMeans was flagged there. Up front for Louisville, Ellis Goomerville has a couple of sacks. Fontavia Stanley, Bobby LeFew, a three year starter, along with Marcus Jones. The linebacking core, Trev talking about Brandon Johnson getting free on the edge. Robert McCune is an experienced U.S. in the National Guard. He was in Kuwait and Korea before. William Gay and Antoine Harris on the corners. J.T. Haskins, a senior out of Lexington, Kentucky, who was moved from quarterback to safety and second starter Kerry, Kerry Rhodes in the back end. First and 15. Four. Looking inside, gets it down to the 11-yard line. Pick up of about six. You know, guys, Frank Moore, when we saw him two weeks ago in Houston, only six carries, eight yards. We weren't sure why. We assumed, and it turned out to be the case, only three days of rest. So they didn't want to really push him on that knee. They were saving him that night for Georgia Tech and for the rest of the season. He had 15 carries against Georgia Tech, and the coaches said he felt great. What do you think, Frank? How many do you want tonight? He said, you know, I'm ready for 20. 20. He said, 20 it is. He'll get 20. He names his number. He's going to get that uh, amount of carry. So it's good to see Frank's coming back. He's added 15 pounds of muscle to his 20 now. Yep. Roscoe Parrish, bottom of the screen there. Watch him. Here's Gore running left. Parrish did a nice job blocking. We're at third and about three coming up. Gore took a big shot. Doomerville had his legs. William Gay hit him up high. And when you talk with Larry Coker and Dan Warner about Frank Gore, and keep in mind, Clinton Portis has played here, Willis McGahee, just to name a couple. They talk about a complete back, and they talk about Frank Gore being arguably the best back that they've had here. I know that's prior to the injuries, but he's working his way back, and it's because of the instinct, the ability to make that cut, and so far, so good for Frank Gore in the 0-4 season. Third and three, two tight ends, one receiver. Smells like a run. It is with Gore. Following his box, he's going to be shy of the first down. Tony Teller, the left guard pole, came out there. What's Coach Coker going to do here, first quarter? Let's go for it, he said. The way his defense is playing at home, what the heck? I know, Coach, this is something you, you first no, guess here. I, I, obviously, you go for it here, yeah, right? You know why? If he doesn't make it, I know, you know, he might make it, but if he doesn't, he leaves the ball down there where all of those students are waiting for him, and they'll score on him defense. Yep. <laughs> Forget about the offense. He'll find a way to score on defense. I like the call no matter what, but I would bootleg Rock Berlin to the outside and give him an option to run or pass. Those, those big tight ends are great mm -hmm. targets down in this situation, too. Yep. And a full yard and just a little bit beyond that for Miami. And as you see, with Parrish, the one receiver, and Gore, same personnel. Two tight ends, 84, Everett to the left, 82, Olsen to the right. Fourth and one. It is Gore. He is stopped. Didn't get it. And Louisville's defense... Comes up with a huge stop. They're gonna spot it, and they might come out measurable. They are short of it. Mm -hmm. 
didn't need to even look at it. The linebackers came in, filled the hole. They're going to bring out the chain. Uh, he hit a wall of Cardinal jerseys here. The linebackers doing a nice job of filling that hole. Looks like all three of them got in there. And the way this game started for Louisville, I know they're still backed in there on the yeah. inside their own five. That was huge as far as momentum is concerned for Louisville. And I don't like to call. I said I think yep, you should put leg and outside and get a tight end or run the ball in. I didn't like the call. Louisville's defense answers the call. No score. There'll be plenty of noise down this end as Louisville has it backed up in its own three, but a great defensive stop. Two possessions, no scores here in our opening quarter. And the one thing about that, remember, they got that five-yard penalty. They had to get it 15 yards instead of 10. Right. If they'd have had 10, they'd have got a first down. Miami on the uh, plays yeah. that went up to the fourth down stop. Mm -hmm. Stephon LaFour LaFour's the senior quarterback, gives to Eric Shelton, and the junior bangs it out for about three yards. Guys, the Under Armour advantage each team tonight. Offensive balance. They got wonderful offensive balance running past Louisville. Does lack of respect. The name of Louisville doesn't strike fear in the hearts of the fans or the players. Basketball, yes. Football, no. The thing I like about this year's Miami team more so than if even the previous three years is this team doesn't underestimate anybody. Louisiana Tech, they knocked off 48 to nothing. And Houston, they took care of 38 to 13. They'll be ready for Louisville tonight. You can see it with the defense there, Kirk, as Shelton was stopped by Tavares Gooden. That sophomore who had nine solo tackles in that Louisiana Tech win. The only other home game since the Florida State game for Miami. So important for Louisville to somehow get out of this hole. These sequence of plays. When you play such a good Miami defense and you continue to be backed up inside your own five, eventually it's going to catch up to you. But they got to be very careful. Don't turn yep. it over. Ton it if you have to. Don't turn it over. Third and six. You see him in Miami defensive guys are stuck in the line. Look out, LaFours. He can run. Can he get the first down? No. Didn't see many Tavares good speed guys. You saw the graphic right before that 11 0 sprinter speed will force another Louisville pump punt. Well, so not only the speed, Thomas Carroll is going to chase LaFours, and LaFours is an athletic guy. This is a strength of his, getting outside. But look at look at Gooden. He shakes a, a back who came out to block him. Then he has the speed to chase LaFours out of bounds. That gives you an indication of the ability of Tavares Gooden. And Gooden is only 6'1", 220, small for a linebacker, but exceptionally quick. Well, Brett Moody has nice numbers except the last one. 19 on his most recent punt. And Devin Hester is waiting for a short one. A little better, not much. Yeah, pretty good. 47 yards. Hester from his own 43. Umbrella of Louisville defenders bring him down across midfield. And at the 48-yard line. Miami takes over in its own territory, Louisville territory, for the second straight possession. College football, Saturday primetime. Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles. They got a tough one, don't you think? Against Virginia, the Cavaliers have been so good thus far this year. 7.45 Eastern on ESPN HD. I saw Mark and Trev both pick Virginia. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It is interesting. Games in Tallahassee. Yeah. We saw Virginia last week. Well, Coach Ball yeah, Club. Yeah. We'll see if they're mature we'll enough and ready to go down to Florida State. Be a good one. One of the five matchups of top 25 teams this weekend. This is the first of them. Brock Berlin here seeing a blitz from Louisville, making a check. Checks to a Frank Gore run. And Gore carries Louisville defenders out to the 40-yard line. Good hard run by Frank, giving seven on that one. We're in the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Canes have defeated Florida State, Louisiana Tech, Houston, and Georgia Tech. Louisville has defeated Kentucky Army. 34-0 at North Carolina. Made more impressive when North Carolina beat North Carolina State last week. And they beat East Carolina 59-7 a dozen days ago. Officially eight, second and a long two. And Berlin will throw. It's a deep route. It's Lance Leggett. And the pass is incomplete. Good coverage from Antoine Harris on that one. A third and two coming up. They worked so hard on hitting the deep ball in the last couple of weeks. 
you guys know we talked about this leading into this game. Louisville's going to commit eight, sometimes nine guys on running downs. Eventually, Brock Berlin and these receivers are going to have to throw the ball over the top and make some plays of that passing game to, to send Louisville back in coverage to open up the lanes for the running game. Quadrant Hill is in the game on third and a couple. Berlin complete to the tight end ever. First down, still going across the 35. Brought down to 32. Second effort by the senior out of Port Arthur, Texas, who transferred here last year. Well, when it's third and short, you have a tight end that's 6'6", 251 pounds. you got to take advantage of him. Just a little underneath route. Brock Berlin took so much off of this ball, he almost got too cute with it. But we, again, have a tight end that big, he's able to go up. Look at the toughness, look at the athletic ability of Everett. We have tight ends at Miami. One thing you know is they can catch the ball and make it happen. Berlin adjusts the play. It's first and ten. Halfway through the first quarter. Four. Cuts it back inside, and he is wrapped up. That's Brandon Johnson. Speed is his game. Conference USA all-freshman team in 2002. And a star in 2003 as well. Those three linebackers, Johnson, McCune, and Brown, Two of them from Alabama and one from Florida. They go to the speed states to get those good football <laughs> players because up in Kentucky, they got some pretty good players. I know that, but they don't have the guys that can run like those guys can. That was a terrific play by a giant 6'5", 2'10", linebacker. Right now, Louisville is winning the battle in the trenches against this Miami offensive line. Second and ten. They showed press coverage and backed off. For a win down the middle again, Everett. And then this thing what's been so far for Miami. Back in the red zone, a 14-yard first down pickup. Kevin Everett, as Kirk said, is 6'5", 251. Now, this was Kevin Winslow's first best play, too. Isolate linebacker Robert McCune on him. Kirk, no way that the middle linebacker McCune can cover Everett or anybody else in the tight end position. Well, you're, you six, agree? you're six foot tall, and you're trying to make a play out of 6'6", six, six tight no. end. That is a mismatch. We saw Heath Miller last week. We all thought he's probably the best tight end in the country. Yes. Miami has a pair. They're pretty good at themselves. Second trip in the red zone. First produced no points. Berlin sets up a screen for Gore, who eludes the would-be tackle and brings it down to the 10-yard line. A man bouncing back from injury. For more on Frank, here's Jill Arrington. Well, Frank Gore changed his number this year to number three. That's the number he wore in high school. He said he wants that fresh start. He's ready to start over after two ACLs. It's a really tough road back, coming back from something like that. But every morning, 6 a.m., he showed up to work out, to lift weights. His partner, Brock Berlin, and Berlin says he's the guy I want to see have a great year. I'm going to go to him as much as I can because he deserves it. He couldn't believe what a fighter he was. He says this guy has more heart and guts than anyone, any player I've ever played with. And boy, does he... Uh... Get the love of his teammates. They are rooting for Frank so hard. Second and one, he's the fake. One more time. Tight end, Greg Olson. Miami touchdown. Defensive adjustment, it's the pass to the tight end. Mm -hmm. Well, they're so determined to stop the running game that they're they're very soft in coverage right now. And good job by Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator for Miami, to see that. And they're, they're attacking Louisville through the air. The reason why they're using that bootleg action is because for uh, my Louisville can run so fast. Yep. The first career touchdown for Greg Olson, the redshirt freshman from New Jersey. 7-0 Miami. Famed South Beach. Thursday night, one of the hot nights down there, or so I'm told. 7-0, the Canes on top. What a very good drive with Brock Berlin leading it. Brock Berlin had four for five for 39 yards on that drive. Looked very, very sharp, throwing the ball straight. All alpha play action. Their punter, Brian Monroe, kicks it away to Lionel Gates and Roderick Clark. And it's Gates again. Very returnable. Did you see the speed off the edge? <laughs> Man, another long field for Miami. Alton right the tackle. Here's the touchdown. 
think there's any question Miami's ready to play tonight. Well, Kevin Everett's been hurting him. This time they're going to motion the man and then bring him underneath. But keep an eye on the Louisville defense. They get lost in coverage. A Brown's going to come over and try to stay. But watch, he and Brandon Johnson completely lose the tight end Olsen. It's a blown assignment and an easy throw for Brock Berlin. Louisville's run every snap inside its own 20. Toss to Lionel Gates. Nothing. Anthony Reddick, the freshman who got the start at free safety out of Fort Lauderdale, a true freshman, comes in to make the play there. When you're starting at your own 12 against this good of defense, it's not only going to hurt your own offense, it's going to put pressure on your special teams to try to get the punt out, and it's going to obviously put more pressure on your own defense. Miami's first two possessions, they've started in the Louisville side of the field. Second and nine. Seven plays, seven runs for Louisville. Here's a pass. LaForce throws complete to J.R. Russell. Hit from Tampa, Florida, who was really geeked about playing in the state of Florida. The senior gets the first down. That time they get J.R. Russell man to man coverage with Kelly Jennings, number 22, and Russell just ran away from him. But I like one thing about that nice pass protection by the offensive line from Louisville, giving LaFleur's enough time to hit the crossing pattern. We're going to have a measurement here with uh, just inside of five minutes left in the first quarter. Russell had an interesting comment that speaks to the attitude of this Louisville team. And they did pick up the first down. Great job with our through to the uh, first and ten line, as usual. He said, we want to come out and hit these guys in the mouth and let them know that we're going to be here all night. Well, he's been in here game in, game out for Louisville. But Louisville did come in with a little bit of a chip on its shoulder, a little bit of an attitude. What happens when you have so much frustration early on in the game? to that attitude. Well, it tests your poise and your character and your leadership. They're very fortunate to have Stefan LaFours under center and directing this team because your team feeds off of your quarterback's poise. Michael Bush has come in the game and the former Mr. Football in Kentucky takes it out to the 32-yard line. Bush was Mr. Football in Kentucky in 2002. Montrell Jones, another one of their receivers, was Mr. Football in 2001. But Bush did it by playing everywhere. He played quarterback, running back, safety, receiver. He is so versatile. He was the backup quarterback at Louisville last year. This year they settled just running back, at least in offense. He'll see some snaps as a safety as the night goes on. He's out. Eric Shelton and Lionel Gates are back in for second and four. LaFour's lost the snap. And lost all the yards. Bush picked up on first down. Spent, spent all that time thinking about and 40 check, 49, 18, favorite 17, and he didn't get the snap right. I don't like when a quarterback is spending a lot of time automatically, especially, Kirk, when you've got a defensive team like Miami. They're not going to do anything famous and fa uh, I, I, upsetting. I, They're going to be sitting right there. LaFour, come out, snap the ball, <laughs> throw it. I know Miami's what you're saying. Be in the same spot. I know what you're saying, but he obviously was coached to yeah. see a certain look, and he tried to make a simple audible. He should, he's a senior. He should be able to do that and get the snap. Miami had personnel issues, and they will have to take a timeout here. He just didn't hang in there long enough for the snap? Yeah, he's going hang in there. I'm not going to put that on the offensive line. The center. It's the quarterback's ball. Keep the hands in there, boy. Get the snap. Quit thinking so much. <laughs> Well, the Cardinals are playing as Louisville's Cardinals trail Miami. 7 nothing here. We have third and about 10 coming up from the 26th. Sixth time against the top five team. They've won one, and we were there two years ago at Papa John Stadium in Louisville when the Cards beat Florida State. Third and 10, and LaFours gets it out and complete for the first down to Joshua Tinch. At 6'3", 215, he played 11 basketball games for Rick Pitino in 2002 and played some more last year as well. Well, Tinch is going to light up in the spot of a tight end, and Bobby Petrino said so we have to be able to beat the with our receivers in one-on-one -on -one matchups, and that time on third and long against the odds, they did that very thing. Wide receiver lines up there as a tight end and goes after Tavares Gooden for a first down. 
Five wide, no backs. Louisville thinks they can do okay in this set. Underneath J.R. Russell, first down, very close to it, depending on the spot at midfield. LaFour is trying to up the tempo of this offense here a little bit. It's a young man who was from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, ended up at Louisville, which was our EA Sports profile of Stefan. I mentioned this all-conference first-teamer is the only hearing member of a deaf family. He says that uh, one of the things that's been so helpful over the last couple of years is how big email has gotten. He's able to stay in touch with his family back at home so much more often. They're watching tonight back at home, watching the closed captioning. And we say hello to the LaForce family. As for midfield, your son dumps it out to Michael Bush. With a convoy, Michael Bush. Great play by Antrell Roll. Just pulled his jersey to slow him down. The gain was 25. And look at that the offensive tackle. Travis LaFue get to the outside. Watch number 78 stays right there. Now watch 78. He comes down and blocks off the man right there and gives Bush a chance. You always wonder, why does a play work like that? Well, it's because Travis LaFue got out there and blocked him. That was a good looking play. Great blocking. Outstanding call. Outstanding call. They motioned the guy away to get a defender out of the way. And then they used the one receiver that was up there to come inside and almost use him in a, as a screen or a rub route and got the lineman freed up. It was a beautiful, well designed play. Two types, one back. It's Gates. LaFue throws it back. Complete nice move by Tick inside the 10, inside the 5. First and goal for the Cardinals at the 1. Guys, after they got out of the shadow of their own goalpost, Louisville said, okay, now we can run off our script. Right now they're going now they're going back to the plays that they wanted to run from the beginning keep an eye on Titch because he's gonna fall and then just use as a delay route he purposely <laughs> goes down drawing no attention to himself frees himself up and is able to run away from Reddick at one point he was at the tight end position yeah. he's a wide receiver second time this drive yeah. they've used him as a tight end pretty cool play first and goal from the one against the Miami defense they've only given up one touchdown all year until now Lionel Gates gets the second touchdown against the Canes defense in 2004 <laughs> Bobby Petrino said, we're going to call the game up. We're going to get out there and be aggressive. The guys talked about that in the pregame. Once they had the space to do it, they did it. And only Houston uh, had scored an offensive touchdown against Miami until that one right there. Arthur Carmody out of Shreveport. The redshirt freshman pounds through his 24th extra point. All square at seven apiece. The left Gates. side of the line, LeFue and Splits, they just came off the ball. Watch the left side of your line come right off the ball and just drive the Miami defensive back. I like the block of 59 Spitz. It was a pulling guard knocking him out, and boom, in the touchdown. And, and keep this in perspective. I mean, the touchdown run is here, but the plays that led up to that run were the key for Louisville to get themselves out of a hole. Only the second touchdown all year that this Miami defense has allowed. And LaFour is a perfect 5 of 5 for 82 yards of the drive. And more on Stefan with Jill. When you talk about the poise of Stefan as you saw him take them down the field, some of that could come from the fact that he matured at a very early age. He served as the interpreter for his family on the phone, dealing with all the business things. He was the only one that could really talk well. So maturing that easily and that soon, he says that's really helped him for the quarterback position, which, as you know, you really need to be the leader of the team. So he's very comfortable in pulling everyone together. And Jilly is such a warm young man to talk to. Uh, talks about that appreciation of the small things in life. And said, so, yeah, don't really treat us any different. I don't consider our family, we don't consider ourselves as handicapped. They are hearing impaired, as so many Americans are. What we have to do is thrive and survive. He said, I'm just blessed to be the one person in the family given the gift of hearing. And you ask me, when you're an underdog and you're looking to be aggressive, what do you lose when you get into a hole like this? What, what do you find out about yourself? You find out about what kind of character and leadership you have. As we said, you're very lucky to have Stephon LaForce leading you out of that hole. Todd Flannery kicks it off. Miami always dangerous in the return game. And they take it out to the 26 yard line that time with Darnell Jenkins, JT Haskins, who made the tackle. Well, Coach, do you agree with what I'm saying with Bobby Petrino 
wasn't able to get into his offense until he got some space to breathe. Absolutely, and people forget something very important. Remember, fourth down and Miami didn't get it? Yeah. That should have been 14. That, that seven points is gonna hurt Miami in this game because that was not a fluke. That was a drive of drives. It was a huge oh. drive because of all the momentum. Yeah. You're on the road against the odds, and all of a sudden they find a little package that works, and now Miami's defense gets back on their heels. And we'll be interested to see when they come back on the field the adjustments that Randy Shannon makes. Frank Gorsuch, Tyrone Moss becomes the tailback, and another flag is thrown. A false start on Miami. Sean Butler, I think the left tackle. Ball start, 84 on the offense, five yard penalty, still first down. It was 64, not 84, and 64 is for Sean Butler. College game day built by the Home Depot comes your way. Eastern, where are y'all heading this week? West Lafayette. West Lafayette, man. The We're home looking. of the old Oakland Bucket game. Purdue <laughs> will take on Wisconsin on ESPN2. Chris Lee, Kirk, and Jill. Non-stop Miami to West Lafayette and college game day tomorrow, Saturday, 10 38. Unbelievable crowd last week at the Coliseum. I think we'll break the record at Purdue this week. Oh. Tyro Moss first and 15 run for a sophomore out of Pompano Beach, Florida. Gets it out to the 31-yard line. All the talk about Frank Gore, it's understandable. With five fewer carries, Tyro and Moss came into the game with just 14 fewer yards. So they're about the same in production so far. The one thing about these two guys. There's so much great competition at their position. But the Miami coaches tell you they seem inseparable. Anytime you see three, you see 30. When you see 30, you see three. And it's helped both of them get through their competition. I today. was tremendously impressed with Tyron Ross against Houston. In fact, he was looking like the only Miami offensive player that really stuck it up them that time. That game, Lee, had 148 of them, oh. 276 yards. And a couple of touchdowns. After the gain of eight, Berlin is pressured and throws an interception. Harry Rhodes, the free safety, comes up with his third interception of the year. And, Kirk, that is what they say about Brock Berlin. Press him, and he may give you one. Well, that's the key. That is the thing that has really hurt Brock Berlin. Talking with Dan Werner and just watching his development, Dan feels that he's improving. He's making great strides. But the thing I've noticed in watching film is that when he gets a lot of pressure in front of him, sees a lot of different colored jerseys, he loses his focus and his read and his vision downfield, and that's why he throws the football right into the hands of Rhodes. He didn't even see Kerry Rhodes because of the distractions from that defensive line. So Louisville takes over in Miami territory after a great prior drop. From the Canes 42, it is LaForte and a lot of room for Joshua Tips to the 22-yard line. And right now, the passing game of Louisville is testing Miami unlike it's been tested. And Florida State didn't test him in the passing game that much. Nice play-action pass, and what they did, they got Roger McIntosh, number 50, man for man on Tish, and there's no way that linebacker can stop him. Now, Randy Shannon's got to do something by putting more pressure on this LaForza. He'll eat him up. I'll tell you, Joshua Tinch right now, they've used him at tight end. That time, they used him as a fullback. They're isolating him on the Miami linebackers. Michael Bush comes in and carries it out of the shotgun up to the 16-yard line. We might have one more play here in this first quarter. All tied at seven. Miami scored first. Louisville just answered in their drive. Bobby Petrino mentioned that he's, they've been working on this game, of course, appreciating, respecting their first four opponents, but looking down the road, you can already see they've saved some stuff for this game, and they're using some wrinkles right now that are keeping the Miami defense off balance. Randy Shannon told us when this happens to us, we get very basic with our scheme and just rely on our athletes to make plays. The backfield is empty. Roger Clark comes in motion, takes it, throws it back to Michael Bush, the backup quarterback last year, threw it for the quarterback in the fours, almost got his head taken off as Marcus Maxey was back there smelling the play. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Reddick. Anthony Reddick, 26. That, that was backyard football for Anthony Reddick. I, I don't know if we're going to be able to see him. I watched him the whole way. He saw LaFleur's. He baited him. He baited Bush, hoping he needed to watch the football. He was so dialed in on making a big hit on LaFleur's. If he would open up and watch the football, it's probably a pick six. And don't forget, Michael Bush was a quarterback. So that was a nice design play. He had a quarterback throwing to the quarterback. Ro rolling to his left, too. Yeah, left-handed. Third and four. 
A run that is bounced by Shelton. He will not get the first down. He'll be a couple of yards short. And Louisville will have a 31-yard field goal attempt to start the second quarter. Heck of a quarter. Yeah, pretty good, huh? Good one. Oh, that one yeah. Four more plays. They gain 31 more yards. All tied at seven. After one. In the OB. In the OB. Back to the second quarter. And the Orange Bowl in Miami with Jill Arrington, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Chris Fowler, Trev Alberts, and Mark May. Mike Tirico. Louisville have a chance to take a second quarter lead on the first play. A Richard freshman Arthur Carmody to attempt officially a 31-yard field goal. And he bangs it right through out of the hold by Stefan LaForce. And Louisville has taken a 10-7 lead. Of course, Louisville and Miami don't play all that often. Their 10th meeting. But the one tie that binds is Howard Schnellenberger. The coach who took Miami to his first national championship and took Louisville to many successful games a 500 record and that 91 fiesta bowl win over alabama he's standing by with jill arrington well howard schnellenberger you're such a legend one of the most memorable moments has to be for you is winning the national championship here in the orange bowl and being carried off the field being back in the ob what kind of memories is it bringing back well it's very nostalgic for beverly and i and uh a night we'll never forget and one that can never be recreated We've tried our best at Louisville to recreate it, and now at FAU trying to do the same. Well, when you coached at Louisville, you went, you won the Fiesta Bowl, crushing Alabama. If Louisville beats Miami, where will that rank amongst that kind of a win? Well, that we, that game against um, Alabama was a pivotal game. That's reversed the trend up there. This would be a game that would uh, put them into orbit and uh, extend their program uh, in, in, indefinitely. After so much success, Coach, why is it that you keep coming back? Now you're at FAU. Well, because when Dr. Cantonese wanted me to come in and become the uh, director and to put in the program, it uh, became obvious it was very, very important to him and to the university and to football in general. Uh, once we were got involved with it, I, the coaching position uh, had to be mine, and uh, we've enjoyed every moment of it. You haven't lost that competitive spark. Thanks for talking to us. Back Thank to you, you. Mike. Thank you, Jill. A great hit on that tackle there. Miami will start its own 20. FAU is Florida Atlantic League, just north of here. Just, hey, 30 miles away. But let me tell you something. One of the greatest all-time building jobs in the history of football, Howard Snellenberger, four years ago, didn't have a football. A football? football? Nothing. Not a, not a, no football. Forget a stadium. Yeah, nothing. Just a football. No football. Nothing. No play. He started, and now, what a record. It's one of the best football coaches in the entire country right there. They got balls in the record. They got balls and they got fields <laughs> and they got players and I picked them as my special. Remember you left that? Yeah. Uh, they're go. undefeated. First and ten. Tyrell Moss sticks it in there for three yards to the 24. Yeah, they won at Hawaii. Yeah. You win at Hawaii. Was that That's impressive. Two years ago. That's <laughs> blowing me away. Now he is watching the first half of this game on the Miami sideline. That's where he coached first. He's going to go over to the Louisville sideline to watch the second half. One of the legends. That pipe and that great, great voice. Uh, Great to see Howard Schnellenberger here, and he is seeing a pretty good football game where his second school is beating his first school by three. He's the man that started this tradition here. Lou Saban brought some football players in, but Howard Schnellenberger coached him to the first national title. Second and seven for Brock Berlin. On play action, he puts it up top. Flat for Darnell Jenkins, and he almost pulled it in. We're going to keep trying the home run ball like to see the confidence they have in Berlin after the interception. They bring it right back and say, let's try to get behind this coverage. Louisville's packing in their players to stop the run. We've got to be able to convert that. And this is what he was able to do against Georgia Tech. And this time, so close, just off the fingertips of Darnell Jenkins. Tough to get into sync when you have so many different receivers run the deep route at different paces for the quarterback, Brock Berlin. Just a little a touch higher, a little bit more of a touch, and that ball falls right into the hands of Jenkins. Third and seven. Louisville would really have some momentum if they stop him here. Berlin changes the play. Only one to snap it. Joel Rodriguez does. Pass is complete. 
But Leggett is snuffed out by William Gay. That Conference USA all freshman team player who was covering last time forces a Miami punt. And the way William Gay played that play, you'd think he was from Tallahassee, Florida or something, right? He, he is. is. Hello. Ah, just a little humor. <laughs> all right, now, that's what I call about closing speed of a defensive back. Settle, settle, and boom. Looks just like one of those Florida speed players. And he's playing for Louisville. Montrell Jones, who used to play for Tennessee, back deep to receive. Ryan Monroe, who Larry Coker said is an NFL type punter. Boy. A kick from the sophomore, 47 yard. Jones hit by Devin Hester. Oh, an excellent special teams performer. Hester comes up with the big hit. We'll have a long field to go for Louisville. Miami's the number three team in the nation. Last week was showdown Saturday, and a lot of things changed. Did the top fives change? Not mine. I got USC. Oh, 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 that's a oh, tease, oh, man. I didn't know it's a it's tease. A tease. I might Auburn. <laughs> Miami. Forget the tease. <laughs> Louisville leading 10-7. A couple of minutes in, quarter number two. Miami 4-0. They survived that uh, game where they trailed Florida State most of the way. They came back with the overtime victory. Down three here. Miami came over as if one of the Louisville players moved, and we'll see who did. LaFour staying in at quarterback. This is right around the time we usually see Brian Brom come in at quarterback for Louisville. Prior to the snap, ball starts. 70 on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Will Rabatine is the center. He is from Louisville. There's Brian Brom, whose uh, brother Jeff is the quarterback coach. He's one of a uh, long line of Broms to go to Louisville. Uh, you can't say it definitively, but most would say he was the best quarterback coming out of high school last year. Miami stops the run just a couple of yards for Eric Shelton. Roger McIntosh made the tackle. Well, Miami did strike first. Brock Berlin completed three to his tight ends on this drive. Greg Olson getting his first career touchdown up 7-0. But then Louisville had a nice long drive, 84 yards, capped off by a Lionel Gates touchdown run to tight end. Stephon LaForce has not missed. Six for six, a great mix of passes set up the field goal a moment ago to make it 10 seconds. LaFours completes his seventh pass. This one to J.R. Russell, but it does not pick up a first down. These two teams and their passing is so big tonight. We, have, we had 10 first downs, six for Louisville, four for Miami, all of them through the air. Keep in mind, Miami's defense has been as tough as anybody in the country. Second in the nation, allowing only 115 yards coming into tonight. Already through one quarter and a couple minutes here into the second, Louisville's got 106 yards passing. That was the first pass that didn't pick up a first down from the four. But he's completed all seven. Third and nine. He's completed all eight. J.R. Russell, first down at the 42-yard line. Well, we talked about pass protection first. Stephon LaFour gets good pass protection, which gives him enough time to hit J.R. Russell across the middle. Pass protection first, Kirk. Pass protection's key, but the routes and, and the way Bobby Petrino has designed these plays, he gets Merriweather to stay up front and get taken away by Tiger Jones, which opened up a nice big throwing lane for LaFour to find the first down with Russell. And now Michael Bush runs. I almost uh, broke out of that Greg Freed arm tackle, but the junior out of Tallahassee's Lincoln High School brought him down. You know, Kirk, you mentioned Coach Petrino. His brother Paul is the offensive coordinator, but he runs the offense. He said, I have yet to be able to give up calling the plays, and that means being involved in the game planning and drawing up the cards. He said, that's what I do best. It's what he did in Jacksonville, what he did when John L. Smith was the head coach at Louisville. So it's his handprint on the entire offensive package. LaFours, nothing open, take down, and much more to the 31-yard line. 
21 rushing yards. What a night thus far for the senior LaFour. Mike and coach, this is the thing that hurts Miami's defense. They play so much man under. When you have a quarterback that can run and avoid the, the coverage by the Miami defense, the linebackers in particular, it's a huge running lane. And LaFour's competitive spirit and his speed, he's going to look to take advantage of that all night. That time they flared a back out, and Roger McIntosh, the middle linebacker, went to the outside. There was nobody in the middle, and that's why LaFour's made that play. I believe you're already four plays of over 20 yards. From the 32. This pass is caught. What a pull in by Montreal Jones. First down at the 25. What a show by LaFors. He's been perfect tonight. We keep bringing this up, but one of the things, that the two things they said they had to take advantage of in man coverage, linebackers with their receivers, and they wanted to try to isolate Marcus Maxey to see if they could get their receivers one-on-one -on -one because they feel they can win that matchup. And remember, Miami is so arrogant, they don't like to change their defense. And Louisville's picking them apart. Michael Bush on the handoff looking for space to run. Gets down to the 12-yard line. Well, guys, you were at USC to watch the Cal game. And in watching that back on uh, ESPN.com, where you can get that game plan online and go back and watch the games on your computer, I couldn't believe how good the Cal quarterback passing game was. All those consecutive passes hit in a row. LaFors, it's early, but he's having one of those great nights where he's dialed in like Aaron Rodgers was last week. You can just see a quarterback likes to like Stephon LaFors. You dream about this opportunity to take on a team like Miami in their place. And right now, you're right, Mike. He's in that zone and feeling good. Second down, they empty the backfield. Five receivers to throw to. This one's incomplete. Here we go. So after nine or no. I see when you throw near number six, the guy takes care of business. And Trell Roll, who is now the guy in this Miami secondary. He may not be the verbal leader, but he is the guy. Remember also about Stefan LaFours. He's 13-4 as a starter. He's almost had 4,000 career yards. This is a young football player who will take on on Trell Roll. I'll guarantee you, if you're from Baton Louisiana, you can play football. He is tough. Yeah, tough Very boy. tough competitor. Always tough in the red zone. Third and seven. LaForce has a man open up. It's Tiger Jones. Touchdown, Louisville. And the Cardinals have scored two touchdowns on Miami. And they'd only given up one all year. It's going to be hard to bring Brian Brom in. I mean, <laughs> the force has been wow. terrific. Yeah. Oh. It's terrific. Arthur Carmody on for the extra point. And guys, you don't say this very often in the Orange Bowl. 20 minutes in, and Miami is down by 10. And the local patrons, I think, are in shock. So is that cheerleader. 17-7, LaFors in Louisville. In Miami, you know, if you're 7-on-7 seven at seven practice against nobody, and you're 10 of 11, you're against air. air. <laughs> 10 yeah. of 11 for 151 is pretty good, and Tiger Jones caught the touchdown. The number three team in the nation at home, where they are virtually unbeatable. Trailing by 10. Ton of time left, but it's a pretty interesting start, isn't it? Kickoff return opportunity. Not much room for Darnell Jenkins, who has to crawl to get across the 20. Take you back to the Tiger touchdown. What a difference a few series makes for Louisville. Look at the time. Look at this. I don't know if you guys used steamboats or Mississippi when you were little, but he had about five Mississippis there before he felt any pressure. Let's take it. Look at old Antrell Well, all world. Now watch all world right here on the whip pattern. Whoosh, boop, outside old 
Jones goes touchdown. Now, I'll tell you one thing. This Bobby Petrino can coach offensive football, head coach at Louisville. He's no, got no. things doing Randy Shannon has never seen before. That's why Auburn wanted him so bad. Oh, I can see scheme, why. But oh. it's not like that Houston stuff that yeah. was kind of crazy. This stuff is, is well organized and still physical. From the 20, Frank Gore runs hard off the right. It's a good five, six yard run out to the 26 yard line. Moby Okoye made the tackle. And a lot's going to fall on this uh, Miami offense now. Obviously, they struggled against Florida State. Here's the little wrinkle from their offensive coordinator, Dan Werner. Go no huddle, try to catch Louisville off guard. Which is, I think, where your quarterback, Brock Berlin, plays his best. Out of the gun, stepping up. Nobody's open. He'll just take the sack and a loss of a yard. Fans get frustrated, but there was nobody open. And we should remind everyone. Ryan Moore is out with a foot injury. Sonaris Moss is out with a hamstring. So two of those big, great receivers are not here tonight. Well, you're relying on not only some younger receivers and guys that don't have quite the experience, but you're also relying on an offense in general that hasn't been able to find its rhythm all year long. But Brock Berlin, I'm telling you, when he gets into the shotgun, he seems to be more comfortable than when he's under center. Loss of the yard, third and five. Pressure from Brandon Johnson off the edge. The throw is incomplete. The hit downfield with no flag was made by Kerry Rhodes. Berlin is shaken up. He took a wide open shot and he is hurt. Straight stick. Antoine Sharp, the nickelback, came off the edge. And it's one trademark of Mike Cassidy's defense. You don't know where the pressure is going to come from, but the defensive coordinator is going to bring it from a lot of different places. Well, this time, Mike, you mentioned the nickelback. He had a running start. Hopefully Brock is able to uh, recover for the, from this. But he just came right here, right towards the quarterback. And Brock needed time for the play to develop. Which gave Sharp plenty of time to get that big hit on the quarterback. Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, was at Oklahoma State. He was also at Illinois. It's his first year here. Remember, Louisville had one of the worst defensive teams in the history of football last year. Mike Cassidy has done a wonderful job. He played at the University of Kentucky, so he knows about the University of Louisville football. Berlin able to get up, walk off under his own power. Kyle Wright, the other quarterback, started warming up. Wright, the redshirt freshman, played a few drives in the last game that Miami played against Georgia Tech. But it is a three and out, and it's a punch from Brian Monroe. Montrell Jones gets it at the 35. One more time, a penalty marker comes down. And Antrell Roll for the second consecutive punt made a suffocating cover play. Actually, it was Devin Hester who made the uh, first one. It was Roll who made that. Our stat man, Matt Marty Aronoff, reminds us that Miami in the last four possessions Holding. has 21 yards. Receiving team, 97. The 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. 21 yards and no first down. Wow. As Berlin catches his breath. We'll step out. When we come back, we'll talk about all the changes in the top ten. The guy's top five as number three is in trouble. Well, you can see from the face of Brock Berlin, as much as you could see it there for a moment, he is in a lot of pain. He walked off under his own power. We'll show you the hit one more time by Louisville's Antoine Sharp. But Berlin came off, walked off under his own power. He was kind of open and exposed in yes. that... And that follow through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And when he threw a couple of times while we were in break, he kept feeling that pain. So you got the sense it was more than having the wind knocked out of him. So they will look at him. Meantime, Louisville has scored on its last three possessions. And that pass is incomplete. It was dropped, intended for J.R. Russell. Well, uh, last weekend was huge in college football. Showdown Saturday. Here's the shakedown of it with Purdue up at number five, Virginia at six three one-loss teams in the top ten in mid-October and Utah in at number ten. Guys, SC and Oklahoma are one, two. Do you think that's the way it should be? I got USC, Oklahoma, Auburn, Louisville, and Purdue. Louisville? You didn't have Louisville. I know. A little humor. <laughs> Jeez, I had Miami. <laughs> the playing right now. Seven. I, I have it actually pretty similar to the way yeah. the, uh, the coaches poll is with the exception. I, I have Oklahoma at one and USC at two. The rest of it's uh, consistent with the, uh, the coaches. From the 26, a run of about four yards for Eric Shelton. We have a third and six coming up 
for the cards. There's uh, your top five yep. guys. Uh, why the difference there at the top? I thought last week in watching California uh, take on USC, I was just really impressed with Cal. Probably more impressed with Cal than I was with USC watching them in person. I think there's some deficiencies possibly on, on USC. Yeah. And Oklahoma, I think, is the most complete team. Offense, defense, and special team. Remember, Auburn beat Tennessee and LSU. Mm -hmm. Third and six. LaFors pressured, got rid of it. Was he out of the tackle box? No. And it's intentional grounding. That's a great call. Santonio Thomas, the senior who's been injured all three years at Miami, staying healthy, a scrapper, a worker. He got in there, would have had his second sack. He's lost it down, spotted a foul, fourth down. But instead, forces the intentional grounding that leads to a punt. But this is uncharted waters for the Miami defense. Louisville is in command. You knew on this series that Randy Shannon and the Miami defense had to make some plays to try to change the complexion of this football game. And this is perfectly called when you saw the replay from Skycam. That's the left tackle was a step yeah. outside the hash marks, and that's right where the fourth was when he threw. Good call. Yeah. Very well called by Randy Smith, the Conference USA referee here tonight. This is an area that Miami's got to do something under his special teams. Brent Moody to kick it. Twin safeties back there. And trail roll, hands it to Roscoe Parrish, who finds a seam and is brought down at midfield. Oh, that almost went a long way. Chad Ripsey made the tackle. Let's get an update on Berlin from Jill Arrington. They're telling me officially that he just got the wind knocked out of him, Brock Berlin. He is touching that shoulder. He's moving his arm around in circles to try to work out the kinks because he did take a pretty big hit, but he wants to get back in the game. He's still warming up, guys, on the sidelines, but still wincing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you see, Jill, as uh, the pump was going on, the wincing as he threw the ball that you were seeing, but uh, word with uh, Larry Coker on the way out. And there is the senior from Louisiana. Frank Gore comes in at the tailback. And he gets it to the 44-yard line, wrapped up by the middle linebacker. The captain of this defense, Robert McHugh. You know, guys, you talked about Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, coming in. Mike Cassidy's from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He has a military background. I mentioned at the start of the game, Robert McHugh in the uh, National Guard, the Reserves, served 18 months, six months in Kuwait, 12 months in Korea. When Cassidy came in, he said, our defense didn't huddle. We need to line the guys up. So he turned to the guy with the military background and said, McHugh, you're the captain. Get him set, line him up. And this defense has turned around a lot this year. Second and seven, Berlin's first throw after the hit is good. It's Kevin Everett. And the tight end took it to the 26. First down, gain of 19. Kerry Rhodes on the stop. I like that. I like Louisville's defense getting in a huddle. I think you, that gives your leader a chance to look into the eyes of the rest of that defense and talk to them. This time they elect to let go, pull back a little bit from the pressure that they've been putting on Brock Berlin, and that time it backfired. You understand how they're changing up the looks, but Kevin Everett, when he has a chance to make a play in space, he does. He's good throw by Berlin. And the key thing about Everett is the fact that he's got that big target of 6'6", that Berlin can hit him with it. That throw looked okay. Gore hit it hard. Frank Gore spins and turns, gets to the 15-yard line. Greg Olson, the tight end who caught the touchdown in the first quarter. Good block. Frank Gore's got good vision here, and he makes a really good cut. Watch, number 82, Greg Olson's the reason why this play goes. The tight end comes back and traps like a tackle. Kirk, that's a nice design play. 77. So Chris Myers, as the play continued on, the three-year starter who moved out to tackle this season, mm -hmm. picks up the personal foul. It was—I was just about to say that you were talking about Olson and the right. job that he did. I was about to say what a good job that Myers did in pushing his way out of, pushing his man out of the way. He obviously did something a little bit after the whistle. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're down by ten, you got to keep your cool. Stupid. Yep. It remains first down because the penalty it happened won. after Gore picked up the first down. So first and ten, but back at the 30. Berlin. Incomplete. Was it intercepted? No. 
It did hit the ground before Kerry Rhodes could scoop it. He thought he had his second interception of the night. See the big hit on Berlin. Remember we talked about his vision downfield sometimes becomes impaired. When Brock Berlin is a quarterback, that ball is close, but it looked like it did, did skip the ground. When Brock Berlin gets that traffic in front of him, Coach, he loses yeah. his focus and his concentration downfield. I'd like to see another one. There wasn't a guy within five no. yards of him that nope. time. That was just a lousy pass. Yep. Harris had come across, but he had already crossed through. Here is Gore. He stopped. We're going to have third mm -hmm. about nine coming up. The, you know, the antithesis of this would be Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning is a guy who has the incredible ability to see into the defense and read the coverage. No matter what goes on in front of him, they can blitz him, they can sit back. He's able to see down into the defense and make a decision and throw. Brock Berlin, when he has a chance to set his feet and look into a defense, he can. But the second somebody gets in front of him, I think it messes up the vision downfield. And he'll, he's liable to throw the ball anyway. They need to get to the 20 for a first down. And they'll do it from five yards farther back. The Louisville was in the track stance, and they were taken off. Half. Ball start, 64 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. That's Rashad Butler again. That's a couple of times. And again, a reminder, Eric Winston, who may have been the best offensive tackle in the country, was injured in the Georgia Tech game, torn ACL, and the junior from Midland, Texas, is out for the year. So 64 is in instead of that mountain of a guy. Offensive line have allowed 10 sacks in the last two games from the University of Miami. How un-Miami is that? That's not very good. Third and 15. They've already hurt Berlin with some pressure. They back up and cover this time. Berlin's throw is incomplete. It is short. Intended for Roscoe Paris. And the fans here, this is a pro town. They're more apt to get on their team a little bit quicker. They got on their team defensively after giving up the last touchdown. Now they're on Berlin a little bit. In the 35, they choose not to try a 52-yard field goal into the east end of the stadium. And instead, they'll kick it away. The long for John Petty is 51, and any win that's here tonight is behind him. So, Booker chooses to bring out Monroe. Look for the corner. No chance. So a touchback, and Louisville will get it at the 20 after a net of just 15 yards on that pipe. Cardinals by 10. Time for tonight's Aflac trivia question. Since 84, 42 first round games in the NFL. Who are the only two selected number one overall? That's a good one. All right, we'll come up with the answer in two minutes, will you? <laughs> Well, a lot of people thought Miami would get a game from Louisville. I don't know how many people thought that the Cardinals would be up 10, 25 minutes into this one. Stephon LaFours has missed only two passes, and really, one was a drop. He has been excellent thus far tonight, and the normal plan of bringing in Brian Brom, the true freshman, has not come up yet because LaFours has been so good. Drives 20, and LaForce takes off again. There's room to run. 16 yards out to the 36. LaForce took that shot across the back of the helmet. Picks up the first down. Why does this work against Miami's defense, Kirk? Because Miami is cleared out. Whenever you have right wide receivers running all over the place, the Miami linebackers, look at their heads right now. They're, they're going to look all over the field to try to find a guy to pick up. LaForce is well-schooled. He understands coming into this game, there are going to be opportunities when he has time. That's going to clear out, and it's going to provide a nice running lane. He's got the speed and quickness to pick up first down after first down. The move man is Broderick Clark. The running back is Lionel Gates into the secondary and out to the 48-yard line. I mean, guys, they're getting like 7, 8 at a play now. And that's after the struggles they had in the first two drives. 227 total yards for Louisville thus far tonight. And look at that. Compared to, they've got more than the season average against scoring, and passing, and total, and running they're getting there. Yeah. Remember in the pre-game, uh, pre-show, we talked about this is by far the best offensive football team Miami's played? Yeah. Guaranteed. They're averaging eight oh. and a half yards on first downs. 
LaForest sees everything covered. He's out of the tackle box. He can throw it away now. Instead, he'll lose three yards as Roger McIntosh chased him down. What has this senior from Baton Rouge been able to do here tonight? Well, he's been able to do everything tonight for this Louisville offense. Most importantly is when the team started with a slow start, he didn't lose his poise. Mike, you touched on it. He's 10 of 12. He's been making some key throws, but he's also been able to come up with some big games running the football. Now five carries for 23 yards. So it's been a combination of running and throwing, but more importantly, the intangibles, the leadership the force is able to provide tonight has been huge for the Cardinals. Miami defense got a minus four on first down that gets everybody's attention. But they run right at him and get across midfield for 39 after a gain of five for Lionel Gates. The reason why the University of Louisville is causing Miami so many problems, this rarely ever happens. The fact they've had seven plays of 10 or more yards on first and 10. Bobby Petrino has got one of the best offensive game plans I've seen this year. That guy can coach offensive football with the best of them. The injured Miami player is Tavares Gooden, the linebacker who's been playing as well as anyone thus far this year. This is a Miami team that has been really hit by injuries in the first half of the season. On this side of the ball, Glenn Sharp, one of their defensive backs at ACL, he's out for the year. On offense, they've already lost their fullback, their left tackle, and tonight are without two of their top three receivers. And we're only at the fifth game of the season. Gooden from Fort Lauderdale, who reminds the coaches a lot of D.J. Williams, if not even more. They mm -hmm. said at this stage of his career, he's long than D.J. Williams was, who's kind of in that bouncing back and forth from fullback to linebacker early in his career. They say they think Gooden is one of the next great ones to come out of this university. Good to see the six foot one, 220 pound sophomore walk off under his own power. There is the injury status mm. those are four he contributed sharp meantime brock berlin continues to look uncomfortable in that upper collarbone area he won't come out of this game unless the coach is pulling out third and nine for lafors who's pressured but it's a little slip screen lionel gates gonna get the first down and more to the 30 and cuts it back to the 20 four yard line so louisville knows what miami knows we want to get on the edge so i'll let you come in and we'll let 23 take it for 26. they just baited thomas carroll and said come on to me come on, come on, come on to me and lafors kept his cool made the throw to the outside and he's able to slip out thomas carroll's going to come here take himself out of the play and then they get their linemen out in front and once you're able to get this ball off and slip it right by Carroll, look at the linemen. Downfield, they have nobody to block. They're just waiting for a safety to come up and run support. The reason that play worked is he halfback faked like he was going to go to the inside, then a whip room and a screen to the outside. There are a lot of plays working away. Oh, let me tell you something. From the 24 gates that time, couldn't get into the outside. Good penetration by Baraka Atkins and Glenn Cook, the redshirt freshman of Hollywood, who's got a couple of starts now. We've talked a lot in the last week or so about Cal and USC, and I think we were all blown away to see Jeff Tedford's offense. And even though SC made the plays, mm -hmm. won the game, just the system that they run reminded us a lot of what Joey Harrington did at Oregon. This, this along with that package last week at Cal, probably the two, and I know they're different, two most interesting and aggressive and explosive offensive schemes that we've seen this year. Remember, this is not a surprise. These guys have averaged 43 points a game. Yep. Second and 11, play clock running down, Miami showing heat. LaFour's got rid of it, it's caught. To Montrell Jones, he's a couple of yards shy of the first down, and we're going to have third and two coming up. I'm impressed with the way, because of his mobility, how LaForce handles heat. He gets back, he gets a grip on the ball, and gets rid of it. In the matchups, there's tension as a receiver lined up as a kind of an H-back. The thing that I like, they get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity here against a safety. They're finding different ways to use formations and motions to get the matchups that they want in one-on-one -on -one situations against the Miami defense. And the Flores is the quickest release I've seen this year. Boom! It comes out of his hands so fast, Miami can't even get to him. A timeout is taken by Louisville. We have third and three coming up. 96 seconds left till halftime. Larry Coker hasn't seen a scoreboard look like this for a while. I know Miami believed 
in Louisville's ability. I don't think the fans necessarily yeah. believe. But uh, the cards have gotten the attention of the Orange Bowl fans. Rarely do you see fans on their feet for a third and three for the defense in the second quarter in here. LaFour's play action. Wide open and caught. Oh, he almost dropped it, but it was held on to and taken in for a touchdown by Lionel Gates. Gates nearly lost it, somehow reeled it in. And guys, Miami is trailing as we have a flag coming here as well. Miami's trailing by 17. By 17 in the second quarter. I think it's a celebration flag on Louisville uh, as they were continuing beyond the play. Asking the Miami folks if they want to hear on the extra pointer on the kickoff. I'm sure they'll take it on the kickoff, a chance to score with a minute 29 left and two timeouts. But what about LaForce? After the score, got an unsportsmanlike foul, celebration number three on the offense. 15 yard penalty will be administered on the kickoff. LaForce, guys, is 13 of 15, 202 yards, two touchdowns. And there are a lot of Miami guys that we've never experienced anything like this. LaForce is getting the credit because he's under center. But Bobby Petrino oh, yeah. and his offense and what his plan is. He said, we're going to attack that man coverage. We thought, all right, coach, good, good luck. Good, best of luck. To, and you know what? He knew what he was talking about. What a package in his first half by Louisville. Arthur Carmody, the extra point. 24-7 to Louisville, stunning Miami. And Louisville, they've had enough success running that these kind of plays work. And this is what helps him is the fullback this time. Gates, they're going to line him up and send him to the outside. Miami's defense is aggressive. They're bringing the blitz. You know what? Once he got to the outside, there's nobody left there oh. to make the play. He's lucky he held on oh. to that. But what a great design again by Petrino. The reason why, to watch the middle linebacker right there. He's got him man for man and lets him go with the fake. If I didn't know better, I think Steve Spurrier was over on the sideline. This reminds me of a Steve Spurrier offensive oh. game plan tearing apart good football team. Bobby Petrino and his team have done a magnificent job, but that guy right there, Stephon LaForce, is the best quick left-handed quarterback I've seen in a long time, sweetheart. Touchdown drives of 84, 75, and 80 yards. Remember, the first two possessions, they were inside their own 20 for all six plays. Look at them now. The problem that Miami has that I'm seeing from up here is they've lost so many great players over the years, especially on defense. Who is going to be the guy in that locker room? It can't just be the coaches. Who's going to be the guy that's going to stand up and beat Ed Reed? Who's going to be the leader that's going to try to talk the Miami Hurricanes in to coming back and making a big comeback in the second half? Pickoff by Todd Flannery, taken back by Devin Hester. So the penalty cost them the space, and they get out to the 40-yard line. Well, Chris Fowler, Mark May, Trev Alberts down here with us in the Orange Bowl, and they'll have the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report from the East End Zone in this famed facility. Talk about Kyle Orton, who's been extraordinary in the Wisconsin defense, and that showdown between Virginia and Florida State. First and ten at the 40. Miami has two timeouts and 84 seconds left. Brock Berlin banged up two series ago out of the shotgun with four receivers and a tight end. Five in the pattern. It's underneath and complete. Darnell Jenkins at the 45, gain of five. Clock spins down to a minute 10. I want to keep an eye on a matchup here. The best pass rusher, Marcus Jones of Louisville. We keep talking about Butler, Rashad Butler, making his first start this year. Keep an eye on that matchup at the top of the screen to see if they can get pressure on Berlin. 56 in white. Had a chip from Quadrant Hill, the running back. Nothing open for Berlin. He just threw it away. And the fans wanted a uh, intentional grounding flag. He wasn't out of the tackle box. There was a receiver over in that direction, even though it was on We talked a lot about Bobby Petrino, but how about the defensive coordinator, Mike Cassidy? Played at Oklahoma State, 
and Illinois last year. Remember, this was one of the worst defensive teams in the history of football last year. 93rd in the nation. Thank you. And he came in, yep. and look what he's done the first year. And you know what? It's not a fluke. They got good athletes, and they move to the ball. Boy, they're extremely They're undersized, well and they make up for oh. great speed and aggressiveness. Third and five. Screen set up. Red and blown up. Ha. By William Gay again. It's his third great third down play. Three and out. And if you would have just taken the names of the teams, you'd think they switched jerseys. Well, Louisville's playing like Miami. Miami's playing like Louisville. Not only that, but Louisville has the swagger. They have the attitude where they now not only are confident, they're salivating. I mean, this team feels like, hey, bring it on. They're out there, and they're not intimidated no. Miami all game. Remember, they got 26 guys from the state of Florida on the Louisville football team. Aha! Uh -huh. They can all run. And most of them probably were rejects from Miami, and they'll say, I used to hate this. We'll show you, sweetheart. You took the wrong guy. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Miami, Miami can't even snap it on a punt right now without something going wrong. And believe me, complete credit to Louisville. I think we all thought Louisville would hang in this game. Well, you knew their so, defense would keep them in the game and have a chance. 24-7? Yeah. yeah. And remember, they're the only team in the nation in the top five scoring and rushing and uh, defensive in the country. They almost got to that part. <laughs> I know. Montrell Jones took it on the run. Not much blocking. He's down for 32 with 10 seconds left. The athletic trivia question about Miami and all those number one picks they've had, 42 in the last 20 years, were the only overall number ones. Silence. Russell Maryland. And yeah. I need test the burden. No. Oh, well, say it out loud. Uh, Still he, going. He said it to himself. With Bill Parcells and the Cowboys. Josh said. Josh Johnston, our spotter up yeah, here. He said it. Kirk, not you. <laughs> Part of the championship team. Thank you. Guys, Louisville has scored 24 unanswered points and has rolled up 277 yards of offense in the first half and the orange ball is stunned those cheers you hear are the u of l red clad folks who came here to see larry coker's team and they're shocked and so is he he's with jill harrington coach coker your playmakers haven't stepped up for you in this half what do you need to do to get back in this game well we've got definitely got to make some plays and we're not out of it jill we can if we make some plays on offense we can get back in it but we've got to do a better job on defense we've got to tackle better they're having too many, too many easy pass plays, and we've got to put pressure on the quarterback. We, we've got some things we've got to correct, obviously. All right, Coach, good luck. All right, thank you. Jill, thank you. Larry Coker's only lost three games and gone into many halftime locker rooms like this. 24 unanswered, Louisville shocking Miami by 17. Time now for the Pontiac High Performance Halftime. All season long, don't forget to register to vote for the singular All-America Player of the Week. This week's nominees will be announced in the 1 a.m. Sports Center. So just text the word player to 64444 on your phone to access the nominees and to cast your vote. We're back for half number two. Here from the Orange Bowl in Miami, where Louisville scored the last 24 points of the half, leading by 17, as Chris told you. Miami gets the ball first after a great offensive first half from the Cardinals. They roll up 277 on Miami. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Jill Arrington down on the sideline. Louisville to kick it off, and Miami has the people to make big plays as you go back through the recent past of Miami football, these canes were tested when they trailed Florida State. This is a far different level of test here tonight. From a couple of yards deep, Devin Hester going to bring it out. Pick up a couple of blocks, hit it hard, and Hester is into the open field. Devin Hester up to the races. That's what they needed. 100 yard Miami touchdown. But a penalty marker is down back at the 34, so hold on. Coming back. Holding. 15 on the return team. 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. Devin didn't know about it till then. 
Buck Ortega, third string tight end. Amazing thing is the momentum of the Louisville player. He'd already taken himself out of position to make the play. Didn't, it's always, you don't even need the block. Right. And I tell you, I, I, you know, we always talk about what has to happen for Miami to get back into this game. The crowd, the momentum, everything that they needed to get back into this football game just happened only to have brought back. So instead of the 100-yard Hester kickoff return for touchdown, it's first and 10 from the 24. And here comes Frank Gore. Doesn't get anything. What a momentum change there. All right, look ahead. What's going to happen here, guys? Well, we just talked about I think Miami, it's so important for them to get something to get the crowd back in the game. The Louisville fans, I don't know how many of them came, but they've taken over the Orange Bowl. Yeah. they got to get the crowd going. The other thing is Brock Berlin last year made a big comeback against Florida when he was down 33-10. to 10. I think a lot of times he plays better when he's in that shotgun hurry-up offense. Second and 10. Greg Olsen, who caught a first quarter touchdown in motion in Berlin from under center, in trouble, and brought down. Well, I'll follow up what Kirk just said. I, here's the home. This is what I would do if I was the University of Miami, first of all. I'd get him in a shotgun, use no huddle offense, but when I'm defense, I'd blitz, I'd spy the quarterback because LaFleur is killing him. Now, Louisville, ha, yo, don't change a thing, but I would throw a couple of deep passes early and try to get another cheap touchdown because if he can get ahead by 31 to 7 that's a lot better than 24 to 7. Marcus Jones the sack third and 14. Jones spin move almost got to Berlin who got it away as he hung in there and Roscoe Paris with a first down out to the 43 yard line. The pickup of 23 for the junior out of senior high school in Miami. Third and long, Louisville kind of stepped up, showing blitz, backed out of it. You know, th there's pressure. Obviously, Miami has to throw. And to think that Ryan Moore, Sonoris Moss are out of the lineup puts more pressure on Brock Berlin and these younger receivers to have to deliver. Here they are in the shotgun now from the 43. They'll run it with Quadrin Hill. Good shot for Hill. Ten first down yards for the junior out of Sunrise, Florida. I think the sideline. Excuse me, a second coach. You got check in with Jill. Okay. And talking to Louisville's head coach Petrino, he told me, I said, Are you surprised you're up 17 on Miami at the half? He said, You know, we knew we came in unintimidated. We knew that we had plays that would work. He said, if we can keep our good field position, we have more plays that we want to come out with. He's pleased that we aren't having any turnovers, he said. And also I asked him, is Brian Braum going to see the field? He goes, you know, right now, I just don't know. I'm not sure. He's pleased with the way Stefan has played. <laughs> with all due respect to the freshman All-American. With all due respect, <laughs> Put your Senator. Woo, 13 for 15. <laughs> Thank you, Jill. First and 10, another complete toss. This one to the wide side and Darnell Jenkins. So... Miami getting some first down yards. Go ahead, ladies. But remember one thing about, I want to bring this point about the University of my, uh, Louisville. They're 101 to 14. They've outscored their opponents in the second half. That means they make nice adjustments and they're well conditioned. Again, 101 to 14 in the second half. That's a well coached football team to good condition. Not to mention 70 to 7 in just the third quarter. So you're right. The adjustments are impressive at halftime. Second and three is play work going right. Quad Hill comes back to the left and picks up the first down out at the 31-yard line. Quad Trent Hill is a junior at a sunrise who was really good in August. He plays a lot in the three wide receiver sets. Versatile one back. You see why there. Well, he's got the body of a tailback. And he's not only versatile enough to play in the one back, but also when they Line him up. He can play the fullback. He is a, a back right now when they get into obvious passing situations it, uh, it does a good job also in pass protection You see a lot of them. There's gonna be a lot of three wides and Berlin out of the shotgun he pulls it down takes off got banged up in the first half lowered his head As he took a hit down there at the 23 yard line that had to hurt 
not just from the injury, but that, but you see the guys coming over to him. Somebody's got to make leadership statements or plays, and he did both there. Well, Brock Berlin is the guy that has to step up and make the plays. We talked about who's going to be accountable at halftime. Brock Berlin is leaving it on the field tonight. I know he's made some mistakes, but he's still being the leader, still willing to sacrifice himself, and we talked about that performance he had against Florida. At least he has that in his background, and his teammates know what he can do when his team gets uh, behind. That helps. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It helps him, and it also helps the uh, rest of his offensive teammates. Great first down pickup again. They got eight. They run out of the gun. First down to the 15-yard line. So that's three times Hill has run that play. All three have been effective. I, ever since I've seen Brock Berlin under center at Miami, I've always felt he plays better when he is in this hurry-up situation. Remember last year in September when they were on 33-10 to 10 in the third quarter? The three touchdown passes. He had 18 of his last 20. Miami came back to win. He just seems to have a little bit more of a feeling of a, of a comfort level, Lee. And I think he, he doesn't think as much when he's in the shotgun hurrying up offense. He used it in high school so much that I think it's just natural for him. That's correct. First and ten from the 15. It's working. Keep going to it. Louisville gets smart to it. He gave him just a yard. Brandon Johnson making the stop there. So this Miami offense had a first half with only total 144 yards. Most of it came on those first couple of drives that started in great field position. Both of those first two drives started on the Louisville side of the 50. They were able to come away with only the touchdown. Remember the big fourth and goal stand by Louisville's defense on that first possession. Play 10 of this drive. Sent Leggett and Paris to the top of the screen. Underneath, it's caught by Paris. Touchdown, Miami. Big comeback there after the kickoff return to have it come all the way back and then to answer and come back with a touchdown yeah. again. Very important for the psyche of this Miami team starting the second half. John Petty sneaks in the extra point. His 52nd in a row. Brock Berlin was 3 of 3 on the drive for 44 yards. Roscoe Parrish, third touchdown catch of the year. Sebastian the Ibis, the computer version and the real version all fired up. The Canes right back in it. Is it true your zesty chicken border bowl isn't made until I order it? Yep. Sounds tasty. I'll have a zesty chicken border bowl. A zesty chick. A zesty chicken. A zesty chicken. Take two. Sorry. Chick. Taco Bell zesty chicken border bowl. Grilled all white meat chicken, hot steaming rice, crisp lettuce, and fiesta salsa. Made right when you order it. For a freshly prepared meal, think outside the bun. Spice up the night. Open till midnight or later. At BASF, we don't make the boat, we make it faster. We don't make the safety seat, we make it more comfortable. We don't make the studio, we make it quieter. We don't make the golf clubs, we make them more powerful. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Sure Unscented. It's the number one selling unscented antiperspirant. Get outstanding odor and wetness protection, minus the heavy scent. Confident, confident, dry and secure. Raise your hand, raise your hand if you're sure. Raise it up to 100% sure protection. Raise your hand if you're sure. Wow. These appliances are as high-tech as it gets. We've got just the place for them. What are you doing in my house? This will go great in your place, too.
Introducing Siemens Appliances, where innovation meets style. Now in the U.S., but only at Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. All they needed was a little something to happen, and the Miami fans have been awakened. This building can get loud in a hurry. It's just got a neat feel to it when the game gets big. This one is Brock Berlin. Being reminded by Roscoe Parrish, I'm going to be here in a second. Look for me, bro. I got you, bud. 24 14. Lionel Gates from the 10. Smothered at the 20. Alton Wright, second time. He's had a lights out pickoff hit. Santana Moss one time walked off this field and said big time players make big plays in big games. Well, Roscoe Parrish provides that here for Miami. Actually, a good coverage here by Gay, jumping the slant, but if the throw pushed Parrish away from the defender, and that's a big score for Miami. One of the reasons why that worked is Butler, Teller, Rodriguez, McMeans, and Myers on that drive not only run protect, but that time pass protection, offensive line. First and ten. LaFour is hit as he threw. Underneath, pulled in. J.R. Russell, what a play. Antrell roll. Flagged down after the play. But Miami got all fired up about it. That's always my favorite when there's an official standing within five yards and doesn't call anything. And then the guy from behind makes the call. But Randy, that sometimes, Kirk, is Yeah, the angles. better view. Yeah, yeah, angles. Randy Smith asking what happened. Was it after the play? And here's what the referee says. Personal foul. Take the pass. There's a defense. 15 yards down and man the run. Automatic first down. Well, whenever you're going to play man coverage, you're going to face crossing routes. Louisville did it the entire first half. That's a good call. Clearly, a face mask, 15 yards against Antrell Roll. But when you play a lot of man, they're going to cross you up all night long with their rub routes and crossing routes. And remember one thing, when you're behind 24 to 14, you got to win the second half on defense. Because if you don't stuff them, Especially the clock group. runs out. Yep. Miami's defense has got to play a lot better. Made great offensive adjustments. Now we'll see what Miami did on defense. First and ten. Eight in the box. Can Louisville crack it? They got Eric Shelton with a flag down. Shelton breaks free into the clear. A marker came down as Shelton takes it all away. Let's see what the flag was. It would have been a 59-yard touchdown return, but even the Louisville players don't look very happy about it. This one smells like it's coming back. Holding number three on the offense. 10-yard penalty from the final foul. J.R. Russell. Man, with Miami so close, all he needed was to hit one crack, and he did. But, Lee, you just said, and you're right, the defense has to make yes. a play. The Miami defense, I know it's a big hold here by Louisville, but tackle. I've never seen a Miami defense like this. And, and Shelton's a big back, and he's got ability. But you slip your, your man, you, you got to make that tackle. Two guys, three guys bounce off, and I know there's a holding call that's going to bring it back, but poor tackling by the Hurricanes. Yeah, but remember, number 32 should be at Florida State. Uh, yeah, he was a, he was a Florida State they running back. They tackled Florida State guys pretty good, too. Yeah, but they, make the tackle. they didn't want that guy. They said the hold was on three, Russell. He was blocking on the edge there. Didn't see it on either one of those looks. Doesn't mean he didn't get a grab of the jersey on the inside early on. Let's say even. Remember the 100-yard touchdown? Yeah. Nah, this one, three even. <laughs> First and 20. Michael Bush. Tried to pick up a block, never got there. Glenn Cook the hit. Second and 23 coming up. All right, for you upperclassmen who don't want to go out there and sacrifice your body, we'll turn to the redshirt freshman, number 55, Glenn Cook, who made a start tonight as a freshman because Leon Williams is injured still with the arm. And Cook had good form there, wrapped up a big. These Louisville backs are big. 240-pound Michael Bush, Eric Shelton at 247 pounds. Second and 23, quick snap. Gates hit hard in the hole by Baraka Atkins. We'll have third and about 20 coming up. That's a big pay by Baraka. Baraka Atkins right here. Remember we talked to Coach Shanahan about, uh, Shannon about this? 
He said that the leader on his defensive football team was this guy right here, number 98, Baraka Atkins, and boy, that was a wow hit. Yeah. Larry Coker could not have gone in at halftime and drawn up a better scenario. Touchdown, get Louisville in their first possession at third and 20. Third and 20. Underneath, we'll get a little bit. Oh, kept alive by Montrell Jones, but unable to get the first down at the 41-yard line. Man, is there a lot of stuff going on out here now. <laughs> it's good stuff. Louisville has to kick it away. Might be smart. It's third and 20. You know it's either going to be a draw or a screen or a short throw. Keep it in front of you. Come up and be sure tackles. Devin Hester took two punts of back against Louisiana Tech. Brent Moody had a bad first pick. Better the next couple. The sophomore from Tallahassee kicks it away. Oh, a fake. Louisville faking it. It's going to work. A big run for Lionel Gates to the 21-yard line. Be not afraid. Bobby, eight yards. Bobby Bowden. Where are you right now? I'm telling you one thing. That was a Bobby Bowden call because what it did is immediately change the complexion. It's Kirk drawn up. Well, it's going to be snapped here and then handed off to Gates in Miami wasn't expecting it at all. Hey, snap to a former quarterback yep. who worked the head up. Mike Bush is a running back now. Yep. Great call. Great timing by Bobby Petrino. Another heck of a call by the head coach. A lot of nerve. Yeah, it worked. What Jimmy Johnson would say? Paper mache or brass? From the 20 to the fourth. What a hit on Andy McCauley. Pass is incomplete. That is Brandon Merriweather. And McCauley gets up under his own power. Do you remember being here last year on a Thursday night when Merriweather took the big hit? Quincy Wilton of West Virginia ran over Merriweather on a touchdown that almost won the game for West Virginia. Miami came back and won it. Merriweather vowed not to. He was the butt of jokes of his teammates. That single play, Mike, turned his career around and made him more dedicated as a football player. Second and ten. Loss of three. Michael Bush is hit by Orion Harris. West Virginia was driving down the field against Miami on a Thursday night. Quincy Wilson, number three for the Mountaineers. Watch the hit on Merriweather. Knocked him down, stepped over him, got in the end zone. Helen Winslow made a great catch. John Petty kicked the game-winning field goal, and Miami won. But Merriweather came back a different guy. Amazing what a year can do for you. And being embarrassed on national TV can provide a lot of inspiration. And Merriweather's become one of the leaders for this defense after that year last year. Third and 12. Middle of the field is open. LaFors goes up top, and it is caught for the touchdown by Tiger Jones! What a game! And the Cardinals are back on top by 16. Another celebration flag has been thrown on Louisville. Guys, Miami is sending a message not only to America, but to the Big East. Miami? I'm sorry, Louisville, Louisville yeah, is. Okay. And I think I it's just... a slap in the face. We talk about BCS busters. You put Louisville, who's going to the Big East next year, in the Big East this year. Louisville's getting a... Uh... BCS? Yeah, well, I'm just saying, they, uh, this team's going to be better next year. Again, the celebration penalty. They come over to ask Larry Coker, do you want it on the try? We're on the kickoff, and I'm sure he'll take it on the He's kickoff. He's on fire! He's on fire! I told him to do it! He's on fire! Tiger Jones. 86 on Louisville. 15-yard penalty will be administered on the kickoff. Jones has caught two. LaFour's three touchdown passes. Miami hadn't given up but one total touchdown on the defensive side in the first four games. Florida State did score a touchdown, but it was on a Florida, on a Miami offensive turnover. 
Arthur Carmody true on the try. I mean, think about it. The kickoff that came back that was called back. Miami drives down the field. Louisville runs a fake punt. Merriweather gets laid out, or Mer Merriweather does the laying out, I should say, of McCauley. Still, Louisville comes back and hits one of Tiger Jones. They're back up 17. ESPN puts the spotlight on the highlight with ESPN 25 The Book, which includes a bonus DVD of classic Sports Center commercials. ESPN 25 The Book, available now. Thank you for bringing me. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I've got an eligible beer in the cooler on Hector. Less taste, very unmacho. Replacing with great tasting, less spilling Miller Lite. Half the carbs of Bud Light. Wow. wow. We've also got a disproportionately hot girlfriend I will need further review. Hi there. Hi. I think I could... Oh, please. Hey, Tina. Tina. Oh. Miller. Good call. You can put a new twist in your toolbox for more torque and tight spaces. Or add a gripping idea for flawless accuracy and finishes. You can find the latest, most breakthrough tool innovations only at the Home Depot. Like the Ryobi One Plus system, the only customizable combo tool kit with a universal battery. More people update their toolboxes at America's largest toolbox, the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Nobody stands behind their cars like Mitsubishi because every new Mitsubishi now comes with a 10-year powertrain warranty, 5-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, and 3 years free scheduled maintenance. Mitsubishi, the best back cars in the world. ESPN's College Football Prime Time, brought to you by Miller. There's good enough, and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. And the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Back here in the Orange Bowl. Been around Lee Corso for more than a decade. One thing my friend always says, good teams answer. We'll see. Well, I'm talking about Louisville. They just gonna, answered Miami. Yeah, but you know, I said before, we'll see the, the defensive adjustments. Randy Shannon played the exact same defense he did in the first half. And Petrino took advantage of one-on-one -on -one and a pre-read, and Kirk's going to show in a second. They just pre-read that blitz and hit a man for man. Todd Flannery, the kickoff man, does it from the 20. Second consecutive celebration penalty. Devin Hester had one called back a moment ago. This time he doesn't even get 15 yards in the return. Down to the 35. Show and tell time. Well, Stephon LaForce, it's the recognition as well. He sees the one-on-one -on -one opportunities all over the place. He's going to walk his receiver Finch down because Miami's going to bring blitzes here which will free a defensive end. Then he checks to the one-on-one -on -one opportunity for the fade. There's a lot going on here, but the quarterback's recognition of coverage slides down his receiver, gets him over top. Miami's going to bring the blitz. He knows he's got one-on-one -on -one opportunity. It's just a matter of getting the ball back, looking at the man he wants, and putting it. By the way, he put that ball right over the shoulder. I don't know if he could have handed it any better over the shoulder to his receiver, Tiger Jones. Rock Berlin and Miami for all the good they did on the last drive, right back where they started. Down 17. Berlin's pass is caught by Darnell Jenkins. He picks up about eight yards. Lee? Uh, let me show you what the first saw. He saw no safety to the left, and immediately he went to the inside receiver against the strong safety, and that's why it was worked. He pre read the defensive secondary and threw the bomb. Yep. That was a tremendous pre read by Stephen LaFerge. 16 of 19, 240 oh. passing yards, three touchdowns. He could not play any better tonight. He's done everything perfectly. Pick up of eight. Miami's moved the ball well. A 10 play scoring drive to start the quarter. Berlin again. This pass caught by Jenkins across midfield. First down at the 48 yard line. Now we have to watch Louisville, which put pressure on Berlin in that first half. Got Miami out of rhythm. Rock is now getting into rhythm. Again, it's that no huddle, the th thing that he's been doing since he was probably in middle school. He's by far, it's, just, it's the most comfortable he's looked all night. It's because this package is something that he loves. It's the adjustment you guys pointed out here at the start of this third quarter. Louisville walks down some pressure. It's picked up nicely. Berlin down the middle for his tight end, Kevin Everett. Incomplete. 
The linebacker Brandon Johnson running step for step. Well, he got what he wanted. He wanted his tight end Everett man to man on Brandon Johnson, but Brandon Johnson, 6'5", 208 from Birmingham, Alabama, he could run like. Woo! He looked like a really good defensive back running that. that. That's a great theory on the blackboard. But when you got a guy like Brandon Johnson that can fly from Birmingham, it'll work. Not to mention earlier, he was Everett was able to take advantage of his size against McCune. He's six feet, 245 pounds. With Johnson, Lee, you said it, six five and can run right next to Kevin Everett. Second and ten, Frank Gore. Trying to bounce it to the outside. Robert McHugh and JT Haskins make the play there. Third down coming up. You know, big picture step back to Louisville last year. John L. Smith leaves from Michigan State a couple of years ago. They hire Bobby Petrino, who went to Jacksonville, worked with Tom Coughlin with the Jaguars. Petrino comes back to the U of L, where he was the offensive coordinator. And last year, two days before the Auburn Alabama game, Four people, including the president and athletic director and chief trustees at Auburn, fly up to Louisville to meet with Petrino. They want to bring him down to replace Tommy Tupperville down on the plane. Third and six. Berlin. His pass is caught for the first down out of the 35 by Akeem Jawa, the sophomore out of New Orleans. Just to finish the point on Petrino, when Auburn came in, and try to hire Bobby Petrino. Then Tommy Tupperville goes out two days later, wins the Alabama game. Auburn rolls into the bowl game, gets the job done there. And work gets out, which obviously scuttled that plan. And Petrino stays at Louisville, and Tom Jurich, the athletic director, he wanted to keep Bobby Petrino the whole time anyway. And they were able to successfully extend his contract, not because of the Auburn yeah. thing. I think Jurich was going to do it anyway. In any case, you're seeing a little bit tonight and nationally, you may say, well, why is Auburn going after this first-year guy at Louisville? And well, now I think people know why. Yeah, because I mean, Louisville hasn't been on right. in a big stage. They've been on ESPN, ESPN2. They haven't been in a stage like this taking on Miami before. And now you understand why. Game stopped for a second because Rashard Butler, the left tackle who's in for the injured Eric Winston, had to come out. So Brian Seabold, essentially the third-string left tackle, a former tight end, has come in to play left tackle. He's the offensive lineman closest to you on first and ten from the 34. All right, Seaball got beat, but Berlin got rid of it in time to Darnell Jenkins for a first down and more pushed out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Berlin took the worst of it because he was beat with the replaced left tackle, but he scrapes himself off the turf again. You get one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and I tell you, you got to give Brock Berlin a lot of credit. I'm sure he felt that pressure, threw the ball to Jenkins. Jenkins shows what he can do upfield, but once again, you get a new offensive lineman coming in there, third string left tackle. You know Louisville's going to come after him. Remember, Mike made a great point. He was a tight end just a couple weeks ago. That's right. But the offensive line's been hurting, so he's moved in there. Frank Gore runs away from that left side, over to the right, into the short side, or rather, excuse me, Quadrant Hill. And gets it over to the 11-yard line. Just a game of a couple there.
come. <laughs> you know, I don't like it. Second and eight. Got it out to about the 34 to get. So we're going to have third and four coming up. You got to give Tom Jurek a lot of credit as an athletic director. He goes out and hires the best guy. He's got Rick Patino as his basketball coach, who some say might be one of the best basketball teams in the country this year. And now Bobby Petrino, I'm telling you. Combination of basketball, football, oh. Louisville by far. You, well, not by far. Right up there. Right, right up definitely there. Definitely going to be Petrino and elbows with the big boys. Yep. Petrino and Petrino. This will be a third down stop Miami desperately needs. LaFour's rolls, throws, incomplete. It's one of the rare times nobody broke free as LaFour's took a heavy hit intending the pass for Broderick Clark. Roger McIntosh lost his helmet in the celebration. Only the fourth incompletion sets up a punt. Mike, he it was the first mistake I've seen LaFour's make. And it might have been the pressure, but he had an open man right here who came into the outside, broke free from the Miami defense, and if he would have been ready right now to throw yeah. it, and he, I thought he was looking at him. If he would have been ready, it would have been a first down. What a reason, was that guy. What a reason he wasn't ready. Robert... Roger McIntosh is about to hit him right in the mouth. No, he wasn't even close, but the oh, oh, hitman broke free. Brent Moody to kick. <laughs> Beautiful kick. Careful to outkick the coverage. 55 yard kick. Marker down. Here comes Devin Hester picking up the picket fence. Couldn't get to the outside. Louisville covered it nicely. Down at the 27. As we said, we have penalty markers down. Officials throwing their hats. We got. A whole lot of stuff going on here in the orange ball. That penalty might have been that he pushed the man out of bounds, and therefore he was ineligible to get back and make the tackle. You know it's serious when they start throwing hats yeah. and flags. Hat, bean bags, flags, sweat, hot nights, humid. <laughs> Credit Louisville. Usually, guys, when we come down here this time of year, we see the other team from farther north start to cramp up around uh, yeah. this time. They have not. And usually you win that battle early in the week, not the day before the game. I want to know what's going on, says Bobby Petrino. Your officials from my conference, at least they can get somebody to talk to me. As it looked like a Miami coach was so close to the boundary that he actually, a Louisville player, ran into him. We have a personal foul, it's a live ball foul, administered as a dead ball foul. A player from the Miami sideline hit a player who was in the game. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. Well explained by Randy Smith. Because it's administered as a dead ball foul, it does not change possession. Miami ball. So I don't know if this is going to be a, a Miami coach or if it's a Miami player, but you'll see it down at the bottom of the screen. He gets pushed and then runs in right there into, yeah. looks like you a know, coach. He ran. Yeah, he, that wasn't pushed, the coach's fault. No, the coach was watching the play. Exactly. The Miami defender pushed the guy into that man. First down from the six-yard line. It's not like the late 50s with Tommy Lewis of Alabama and the Cotton Bowl coming on the field to make a tackle. Because we've seen incidents before like that. That was purely accidental in terms of the coach's side on the sideline. But again, the key there was how the penalty is administered. It happened during the play, but it's a live ball foul, so Miami retains possession from its own six-yard line. Dancing in the hole is Gordy. Pushes it forward into the 12. You know, field position is not Miami's best friend right now, but they've got to continue with the same style of offense and keeping Louisville on their heels, where Berlin seems to have so much comfort. Frank Gore, just three and a half yards per carry. And this is the second time that Rashad Butler is being told to come off the field. I don't know if he's bleeding and continues to bleed or what it is, but the referee, Randy Smith, is coming over to tell Larry Coker won, and that means Brandon Seabold has to come in out of uh, upstate New York, a junior. What about you? But if I were number seven, when I saw Seabold come in, had to be ready to feel pressure coming from the left side. I'd call a screen. <laughs> something. Maybe it's when he's wrapped up. Maybe that hand is illegal the way it's wrapped up. 
I'd roll to the right. They got a tight end. They got <laughs> tight end covering up Seabolt. Did an okay job there. Gore ran it right. He got a first down. Close to the 20 yard line. For the first time in a long time, it looks like McMeans, Myers on the right side are starting to come off the ball. Watch him, nice blocking on the right side. And I like one thing about Gore here. You see how he makes that little cut and runs north and south? They've got to have a few of these runs, but my friends, not too many, because that's tick, 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 tick. Not going to win this ball game with too many tick, 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 ticks. Yeah, well, they score here on this drive. It's a three-point game. But it's, it's the momentum that they've had with Berlin in yeah. the second half. Yeah, he's, he's just shotgun. Fine. Keep going. going. Shotgun. From the 20, Quadrant yeah. Hill is going to lose a yard as he's tackled by Bobby LeFew, one of two LeFew brothers on this team. And another Miami player is hurt. Uh, and that's the an honor as well. That's Joel Rodriguez, their fine center. See, he doesn't have a choice. He's going to have to. Oh, boy. And you know what hurt, that hurts more than anything else? It's the shotgun yep. snap. Boy, every time I saw oh. the first center go yep. out, I used to tell my coordinator, go right up the middle on the shotgun and see if that guy on the second team can make the shotgun snap. Rodriguez, who was a second-year starter, hurt at the end of 2003, had a hamstring that bothered him most of this week. The backup center, Anthony Wolschlager, comes over to get a football and get some snaps here with Brock Berlin. Uh, see if we can see what happened to the senior from Miami. He's limping off under his own power. But Tony Teller just rolled up on top of it. Uh, it's good to see Rodriguez come off like that. Rodriguez is uh, a product of two Cuban Americans. He is hoping to become the second Cuban American full-blooded person to become an National Football League player before King Gonzalez was here. He's with the Cleveland Browns. He's the only other NFL player with two Cuban parents. Joel and his dad have a great relationship. Wolschlager, the center, out of the gun for second and 11. Final minute, third quarter. With two backup linemen. Time for Berlin! Reynolds in the tight end! Held on to the ball as he got it down to the 30-yard line. 51 yards. And Seaball, the backup, tackles the first one down there to thank him. Louisville sitting back. Olsen, who made some plays earlier, is able to get upfield. And this is the way you attack a defense. It's sitting back and playing with two safeties. Nobody runs with Olsen down the middle of the field. That's on a linebacker. He's got to get vertical and stay with him. That's because they blitzed from one side and nobody picked him up. The free safety made a mistake there. Both linemen who were out just came back in. From the 30 Berlin. Lance Leggett. Out of bounds back at the 23-yard line. Officially a pickup of see, seven yards. Berlin is 10 of 11 this quarter. As you'll see in the top of the picture, there's a blitz on. He just runs what they call a seam cut. And number 97, Brandon Johnson, who was supposed to pick him up, and remember, ran with him about 10 plays before, just missed him. It was a bad assignment mistake, not a physical mistake. Yeah, he did such a good job running the play before as a linebacker, getting vertical that time. Blown assignment again. Lance Leggett, one receiver, bunch formation to the bottom of the screen. With the tight end, Olsen, the top of the bunch. Berlin works to get it free. Darnell Jenkins, out of bounds of the 10. First and 10 for Miami. They're just outside the 10-yard line. 11 to 12 this quarter, Brock Berlin. Where was this rhythm in the first half? I mean, he looked lost. Forget about the injury. This time, he feels pressure from the outside. He does exactly the way he's taught by Dan Warner, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. Step up, away from the pressure, and then get the ball to an athlete who can make the play, and it's a first down for the Kings. Roscoe Parrish came out of the huddle clapping his hands. Number one in the slot wants the ball in the worst way. <laughs> it's like, come on, give me another touchdown. What's that slam? Pressure coming. Berlin got it free. Caught and dropped by Jenkins with six seconds left here in the third quarter. And remember, by the way, if it gets close in the fourth quarter, Louisville's going to be going into the closed end of the Orange Bowl. I'm 
he keeps running out the same receivers. It's all they've got. Only four. No Ryan Moore, no Sonaris Moss. Lineman hurt. Quarterback stumbled off the field hurt. Gutty performance here. Berlin underneath. Harris caught it. He's brought down at the six. We're going to have third and five coming up for the first play of the fourth quarter. A huge play will start the fourth. The Orange Bowl comes to its feet. A lot of people tell us the fourth is coming up after a great, great quarter of football. Louisville by 10. Pay attention. Sunday NFL Countdown presented by Old Spice, 11 a.m. on ESPN. Nobody stands behind their cars like Mitsubishi because every new Mitsubishi now comes with a 10-year powertrain warranty, 5-year bumper-to-bumper warranty, and 3 years free scheduled maintenance. Mitsubishi, the best back cars in the world. This is our house. Everything you have trained for your entire life has prepared you for this moment. It's us versus them. You've never seen anything like this before. Not that. This. Introducing the Hot Sleeve. Joint hugging pain relief with medicine that goes on icy to dull the pain, then gets hot to relax it away. The new Icy Hot Sleeve. There's never been anything like it. Cold hard fact. Other beers are shipped warm in rail cars. Coors Light rail cars are always cold insulated. Why? Because we know you love cold beer. Coors Light. Our goal, the coldest tasting beer in the world. Every day, printer companies say they can help us print cheaper. Why don't they show us how to print less? Less. <laughs> print less. Printer companies don't help people print less. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> One company will help you print less. Lexmark. We've designed smarter ways for the world's biggest businesses to print, move, and manage information. Go to Lexmark.com and see how we can help yours uncomplicate. Hey, who's tired of paying $5 for a bag of peanuts? Yeah. Who's tired of paying huge overage charges to your wireless company? Yeah. What if Sprint got rid of ugly overages? Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least $40, so talk all you want. You, uh, went over your barbecue minutes. Plans start at $35. Sprint PCS, now that's better. Tonight's game available on ESPN HD, thanks to Best Buy and Phillips. Off we go to the fourth quarter from the legendary Orange Bowl in Miami with Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Jill Arrington, Chris Fowler, Mark May, and Trev Alberts. This is Mike Tirico. Louisville fell down 7-0, scored 24 unanswered points. Miami outscored the Cardinals 14-7 in the third. Louisville hasn't lost a third-quarter lead in this century. Really, only four years, but you get my drift. The fourth quarter begins with third and six for Brock Berlin, who's been darn near perfect here in the second half. Cardinals bring the heat. Berlin puts it up. Incomplete. No flag. Lance Leggett, the freshman, the tallest of the receivers, tried to pull it down. William Gay has made three great third down plays tonight. William Gay's 5'11 against Leggett's six foot Four, but he goes up in good position to knock it down. And I keep bringing this up. William Gay is from Tallahassee, Florida. So he's played a lot of good football in that area. It's a nice defensive play. One of the few four throws by Brock Berlin. He's got to throw that to the corner to give Leggett a chance to out jump it. He just brought it back to him. 24 yard field goal. Great angles. You see John Petty steer it in from the left hash. And it's a one possession game. 31 24. Seven seconds into the fourth quarter. Louisville has shown you that these teams that are, quote, BCS busters can really handle the big stage. We'll talk about some of the others with the Cardinals right after this. 
This guy just went to five bowl games in one week. Of course, he forgot his sunscreen for the first two. He lost his voice by the fourth game. And the worst part of all is his girlfriend dumped him when he got back because he didn't tell her he was going in the first place. So tell me, was it worth it? Oh, yeah. Enter to win Cooper Tire's Ultimate Bowl Tour, and you and three friends can be headed to five bowl games in one week. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And who knows? This could be you. The infinitely versatile Saturn View. It helps you pack everything in. Saturn. People first. Get a new 2004 Saturn View with 0% APR financing or $37.50 toward your down payment. See your retailer for details. Sorry about that. You all right? Yeah. An accident isn't your best moment. But at State Farm, we'd like to think it's ours. In fact, according to J.D. Power & Associates, customers rated us higher than any other insurance company for collision repair satisfaction. Yeah, everything's fine. I talked to State Farm. We know this isn't your best moment, but it's a moment you'll be glad you have a State Farm agent. So call us today. Another fresh idea from Papa John's. Our new spicy Italian pizza. Loaded with pepperoni and Italian sausage. Now buy a large spicy Italian pizza for $13.99 and get a DVD movie. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Cold hard fact. Other beers are heat pasteurized at 140 degrees. Coors Light is always frost brewed at an icy 34. Why? Because we know you love cold beer. Coors Light. Our goal, the coldest tasting beer in the world. There you see how the game progressed. Miami fell behind 24 to 7. That great third quarter had 310 yards of total offense and essentially four scoring drives as Petty pays off that last one with a field goal seven seconds into the fourth quarter. Monroe kicks it for Miami. And the return for Broderick Clark. A flag. You can see the Louisville player, Antoine Sharp, the cornerback, was trying to get his hands out of the way so he was not whistled for holding. Couldn't do it. Number five on the call. During the retolding, number five, the 10 yard penalty, in the spot of the foul, first down. <laughs> so I'll bring him back a little bit. Well, there are the four schools, not in the six top leagues, the non BCS leagues. Without the automatic bid, if you win in that league, you automatically go to the bowl championship series. If you have a great finish, like in the top six, you have to go. Top ten, they can consider you. Uh, they wear the tag, and they have very few chances to prove it, and almost always on the road. Louisville is taking the most advantage of that opportunity so far tonight. We saw Utah beat a good Texas A&M team. They haven't lost. I don't know if anybody's going to beat Utah, do you? I think the, the, the argument here is not so much could these teams survive in the SEC or the Big 12 week in and week out. It's what could they do given an opportunity in one game? Could they beat a Miami? Could they beat a Tennessee yeah. team of that caliber? Without question, especially if you get Boise on the blue turf. Boise, Utah, and Louisville, I think, have proven that. Stephon LaFours has played all the way for the U of L. From the 13, his pass is incomplete. Intended for Gary Barnage, the freshman second string tight end. Merriweather, the big hit earlier in this quarter, comes up with a break up there. Quarterback numbers tonight. If you looked at those at halftime, it would be lopsided. Berlin's taking advantage of a big second half and the hurry up offense. I'll be interested to see if Miami maintains that hurry up if they get the ball when they get the ball back. Lionel Gates has been a good runner tonight. A yard shy of the first down. Submarine by Anthony Reddick. That's freshman Anthony Reddick. This could be terrific. Out of Fort Lauderdale and about 195 pounds. The difference to me in watching Louisville from the years of John L. Smith to Bobby Petrino is that physical aspect and the two-back offense that Bobby Petrino's told us he learned from being around Tom Coughlin and Tom Capers those years in Jacksonville. Third in the yard. They line up. LaFour's lost the handle. It's free. As the second time that has happened, Miami's coming away with the ball. And they have it. LePay 
Reigns come up with the turnover. Twice tonight, LaForce has blown a snap under center. Santonio Thomas, the recovery. Miami takes over at the Louisville 22. We talked about it when Miami cut this lead to 10. You could just feel the Canes were coming. They needed a break. Second time, LaForce did not keep his hands in there. It looks like he's in there battling, but when it's a quarterback going up against a 300-pound defensive tackle, chances are the big guy is going to win. Also, most of the time when you have a fumble snap like that, it's because the quarterback's hands split. You've got to keep the thumbs together and keep them in. LaForce dropped that ball because his hands split, Mike. Second time he split those hands. The first one that they recovered was exactly the same. Golden opportunity for Miami to tie the game. Berlin has to take a timeout. Timeouts could be very valuable in the remaining 14.05 of this one. Now, Miami is not in unfamiliar territory. They have survived and won so many of these games. We've seen two of them on Thursday nights. Pittsburgh driving down with Rod Rutherford. Try to hit Yogi Roth, their fourth receiver, a walk-on. Just couldn't get there. Number one, one by seven. And then we showed you earlier the game against West Virginia. Miami number two, eluding Vince Wolfork, and everybody in the Miami team was Quincy Wilson. Bowls over Merriweather. He was still going when he scored. West Virginia took the lead. And in two minutes, we had two of the great plays of last year. Do you remember the catch by Winslow on fourth down? It set up the John Petty field goal. And although West Virginia came in and played a great game, Rich Rodriguez and company walked out with a two-point loss. And Rich Rodriguez and West Virginia never lost another game right, they, until right. this year against Virginia Tech. Yeah, that used, thing, that used it, they used that as a springboard no to really question. come back. No question. I remember walking into that locker room after the game and talking yeah. to some of those players and Rich Rodriguez just because of the effort that they gave it could have gone down, but they definitely went back up and went on to play in a bowl game and had a great year. It is the proverbial slippery slope for Louisville right now. They're riding high at 24-7. They have scored, but Miami's defense has tightened up. And now the Canes can tie the game. They line up in the eye, and they run Frank Gore. He hits the hole with some authority as he spins to the 15-yard line. A gain of seven. What's interesting is Miami's had so much no huddle and so much shotgun that because Louisville is back on their heels, it's opened up the running game. Lee, you talked about how the right side of the line is doing a better job of getting a little bit of a push. This, this, this second half, it's almost like watching a different group. Despite the injuries, they're finally getting a surge when they've decided to try to run the football. Also, they're tiring out the front four of University of Louisville. Three straight seven-yard runs for tonight's Applebee's hometown hero. Four for Carl Gables, Florida, where the Miami campus is. Oh, about a 20-minute non-traffic drive from the Orange Bowl. That's at 2 in the morning. Takes it just for a yard or so. We'll have third and short coming up. It's a great buzz in here, isn't it? This yeah. <laughs> Come on. Something big's going to happen. Yeah. Who's going to do it? What's it going to be? Will it be another moment that we can say we were here in the Orange Bowl when it happened? This is the kind of situation I saw. If the guy ever breaks the first group, he goes for a touchdown. You got to be very careful, Louisville does, not to have him go all the way for a touchdown. Third and a couple. The tight end holds it in motion. Here comes Gore. Oh. He ran into his own offensive lineman who was trying to pull out there. Tyler McMeans, the right guard. And field goal is what the coach says. They get a four point game. And the force is a lot better now. Just got done talking about the great job the offensive line is doing and the surge they're getting. You got to get around the block there by Butler. And if he does, it's a big hole there. Frank Gore. But again, it's that left tackle being pushed back. That yep. might not have happened exactly. if Winston's there. Right. John Petty made one from 24, this from 32. Well, that snap was tight to the body of the holder. Very nice job by Matt Carter to get it down. And it's a four point game. 31-27. Three minutes gone by. Fourth quarter.
The infinitely versatile Saturn view. It helps you pack everything in. Saturn. People first. Get a new 2004 Saturn view with 0% APR financing or $37.50 toward your down payment. See your retailer for details. Wow, looks like a blowout. IGN calls it the most complete hoop game on the market. ESPN NBA 2K5. Rated everyone. Gentlemen, it's true. NBA League Pass can get you up to 40 games per week. Elton, can I watch the Clippers play if I live in Kalamazoo? With the NBA League Pass, you can. Ron, what's the League Pass motto? Come on, Artest, you know this. Ah. <sighs> Closing is the key to success. And never forget it, guys. Order now and save $20 off the regular season price. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS, tune to Channel 216, or visit directtv.com. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Want to check out DirecTV's best entertainment package for free? You serious? Tune in to the Total Choice Premier Free Preview Weekend, October 15th through 17th, only on DirecTV. Get a free look at all of our premium services. HBO. Stars. Showtime, Cinemax, and Sports Pack. That's over 55 premium channels, all free, all weekend long. That's a nice trick. During the Total Choice Premier Free Preview Weekend. ESPN's College Football Prime Time is presented by Cooper Tires Ultimate Bowl Tour. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And in part by Saturn. People first. I don't think many people here in the Orange Bowl are going to be dancing the night away tonight. Because the fans have had to work. This has been. <laughs> a... oh, thank you. Oh, LC? Both you got. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. LC, we've seen his moves. <laughs> 31, 27. Roger Clark and Lionel Gates will not get a return. A booming kick by Brian Monroe, his third touchback of the season. Just tuning in, you, you have missed so far one of the better performances by a quarterback against his Miami Hurricane defense that we've seen in years. LaForce has made key throws. He's used his athletic ability to get outside and break contain. It's been a heck of a combination of, of play calling and LaForce, his poise and patience and leadership but there have been a little bit of a swing of momentum here into the second half. And look at this, Miami guys. Defense. LaFours is on the bench, and Brian Brown, the true freshman, who comes in for a series every game, is in in the fourth quarter with a four-point lead on the road at the number three team in the nation in the Orange Bowl. Wow. Brown, Rust, throws it complete. J.R. Russell got away from a couple and is pushed out of bounds by Antrell Roll at the 20. Three-yard line and a flag. Oh, let's see. The referee reached for his flag. And he's not going to do it. Not going to do it. And Russell is unhappy. What do you think about going to Brom here? They do it every game, but they've never been in a situation like this. Just, I, go ahead. I wouldn't do it. I don't, I don't have to say anything. I wouldn't do it. I'm not second-guessing. I wouldn't do it. Because the Flores is the leader of that football team, and you put a lot of pressure on him. He's a senior. He's a leader. Yeah. He's had a great night. I know it's a system, and I know yeah. they've gone to it, but tough time to bring. I don't care how good Brom's going to be. Tough time for him to come into a game and take your leader out of the huddle. Exactly. Top high school quarterback in the nation last year out of Trinity High School in Louisville. Brom hands it off to Eric Shelton. He gets a couple of yards out to the 26-yard line. The Brom family has been around Louisville football for a long time. Lee, when you coached from 69 through 72, you got to know one generation of this family. Oscar. Oscar Brom was the quarterback. Greg Brom played here at the U of L 89 through 92. Jeff Brom was now the quarterback coach, led this team to a great gutsy bowl game win in the Liberty Bowl. Had a seven-year career in the NFL, was a backup in the Super Bowl. Now is the quarterback coach. His kid brothers got third and four. And delivers it like he's been doing it all his life. Wide open Joshua Tinch to the 43-yard time. But a marker's down back at the pocket. And it's on Louisville in case you can't be. And that was Jeff. And it's Conference USA officials, by Holding the way. 59 offense. The 10-yard penalty from the previous 
spot. Filth up down. Jason Spitz, the weak side guard. Let, let me just enjoy this for a second because I, I can't. A freshman quarterback who comes in in the fourth quarter with his team leading against Miami. I know there's a hole. I know they're going to bring it back. But look at the pressure and look how tight this throw is for a freshman to make. And he puts it right where it has to be. It's, I've never seen a hold on a guy who got knocked down. God. The guy who was getting knocked down, the left guard, was the one who held. Now third and 14 out of the gun. He's not the mobile quarterback. But he takes off. And he gets the first down at the 32-yard line. Well, now, now we know why he gets a chance to get in there and show what he can do, whether we agree with it or not. Man coverage has cost Miami all night long when it comes to the quarterback running. Brom might not be, have the speed of the floors, but he sure took advantage of this again on third down. What did I say in a coaching adjustment? Let's the quarterback go after, but spy the quarterback. Did I say that? Spy the quarterback. Thank you. Now inside of 10 minutes. Long count. Good opportunity there for Shelton. But he's held up at the 34. Another marker comes in. You could hear the sideline yelling for the holding call. And they're going to get it. On the tight end, Andy McCauley, 45. Holding. 45 on the offense. It's a 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. Still first down. Fourth major flag on Louisville in the second half. Mike, repeat that about where these officials are from. They're because Conference is, USA. Yeah, they're, they're, so, so everybody in the country knows this that this is the university. Yeah, that's right, because right. everybody's going to think of getting a homer job here in Miami, which they're famous for. But this is Conference <laughs> USA. Who is that? What, what? They're famous that for that here. Jab? Absolutely. That was a little jab. What's happened to Florida State? Shot a across the bow. Place. Florida State style. That's right. Conference USA. Louisville's official. <laughs> First and 18. Rob gets time. Does he have a receiver? Oh, he's trying to squeeze it in with Antrell roll covering. Antrell's telling J.R. Russell to bring it on even more. Second and long coming up. Antrell Roll's excited because he, he's made a play tonight. First time we've really called out his name and had a chance to, to make a play. Man coverage, a little bit of push in there, but he does come up once the ball's in play, comes up and puts the ball down. Yeah, there was a little bit of pushing there going up the route. Russell's done well tonight against Roll. This time Roll rolls to the other side against Roger Clark. And a run with Eric Shelton, who hit it hard, got out to the 37-yard line before Reddick and Merriweather met him. A pickup of 13. We're inside in nine minutes with third and about five coming up. J.R. Russell is the best receiver on the Louisville team, and he's had a chance to match up with Antrell Roll. You know he's looking at that as a challenge, a chance to go up against one of the best. A guy will be heading to the NFL. Russell wants to hold his own. They've been chippy all night long, going back and forth, trying to send a message. Three receivers to the top. Miami brings it secondary over there. Rom has time. Underneath, through deflected and incomplete. It was in and out of the hands of Joshua Tinch, then ricocheted up into the air. It was a tight window he was trying to squeeze it into. Yeah, Mike, he threw the wrong guy. The underneath yes. receiver, yeah. Mike, was wide open, and he went to the deeper receiver. Hook coming up. You'll see a number a one receiver going across the top. But well, what's the underneath receiver right here? He's wide open for the first down right there. And he throws the ball to the wrong guy. Hmm. Brent Moody out of Tallahassee. Hit a couple of big punts here recently. Devin Hester awaits. Returnable, 41 yarder. Hester from the 22. Picking up box. He hit the middle hole. Devin Hester, the putter to beat. He beat him. The Miami Hurricanes take the lead. Touchdown.
John Petty extra point. Miami was down 24-7. They lead 34-31. For the third time this year, Devin Hester brings a punt back. He had a kickoff return called back at the start of this half. He takes it to the house, and what a house this is. In the orange ball, Miami back on top. Better why the road will only get tougher for the nation's top two. Is Schilling really gone for good? Going wild for Yao in China and Tio's big warning for the Panthers. After the game, ESPN. Okay, we've got illegal use of the brain on Tom, passing out beer with less taste than Miller Lite. Replacing with great tasting, less filling Miller Lite, half the carbs of Bud Light. We've also got intentional acoustic romanticism on Gary. Girls not buying it, tent invitation declined. Wait, what? Chicks dig music. Miller, good call. So you're a guy who wants to get the girl, but you've got oily skin. So you get Nivea for men oil control to get rid of oil and the shine. And get the confidence you need to get the girl. Got it? Good. Nivea for men. More evolved skin care. The infinitely versatile Saturn view. It helps you pack everything in. Saturn. People first. Get a new 2004 Saturn View with 0% APR financing or $37.50 toward your down payment. See your retailer for details. Earlier tonight, our Wakefield Wildcats lost by a field goal. 21 to 20. That means no playoffs this year. Well, let's lock it up. I can stay a while. Me too. Come on in, boys. I'll bet you're hungry. At Applebee's, being part of the neighborhood is what we're all about. Devin Hester ties Kevin Williams. Three Miami punt returns for touchdown. This half, the Canes, three touchdowns, two field goals. No punts, no turnovers, 24-7 deficit erased. And this place is delirious. But there's still time left. Returnable kick, two key back-to-back -to -back touchbacks for us. Back to the punt return. This is a low-line drive kick, and once you do that, notice there's nobody down there near him. Devin Hester told everybody that I want to be like Deion Sanders. Yep. That's the guy he wants to be on. Defensive back and a kick returner. <laughs> Kirk, take that punter. Well, I, I, this, the punter tries oh. the leg whip. He goes down. The crossover dribble got him there in the open field. But I know Antonio Perkins, one of the best ever in college football, if not the best, to return punts. Devin Hester, very, very special. I think he's the most dangerous return man in college football. Perkins out for a little while with Oklahoma. There's the punter, Moody, who hit the deck. So Louisville goes back to Brown, at quarterback, and back to the run with Lionel Gates. Out to the 23-yard line, second and seven coming up. Eight minutes left. Louisville trailed 7-0, came back and tied the game. Scored 24 unanswered points. Had a 31-14 lead with six and a half left. And Miami has come back to score the last 20. Will somebody please tell me if number 17 is hurt? Stephon, of course. I mean, one of the best off quarterback performances we've seen in years. Yeah. And he's sitting over there he's got with his mouthpiece in his mouth. Must be hurt. Maybe he is. He, he, he may have been hurt at the bottom of the pile with the fumble. Second and seven with Brown. Steps up and guns it. It's complete and the stretch is a yard shy of the first down for Brockton Clark, the junior. This kid's special. I'll say that. This kid is not only has the ability, the moxie. The coaches said what, what they really like about him is he has tremendous motivation to be great. Of course he has the physical ability. We're talking about Brom. He is for him to come into this game and perform like this says a lot about 
protect him and the kind of poise that he has. Third and a half yard power play, and they get the first down with Lionel Gates out to the 31 yard line. You know, Kirk, I, I think we need to reemphasize here the point you made. When Louisville a couple of years ago was running up big scores with Dave Ragone, Ragone got beat up that one year after all the offensive linemen left his senior year. One of the reasons they didn't have two back in the offense, they couldn't play. Hence the problem with all these spreads. You can't play power football when you need to. Louisville has that now in the two back. You saw it there. The five years that uh, John L. Smith was in Louisville, they averaged 125 yards rushing. Last year, 228 yards rushing with that two back combination along with the one back. Brown first and ten. He swings it out to Eric Shelton, who is hit hard by Roger McIntosh. Keeps the play alive and turns a loss of five into the greatest no game you'll see all year. <laughs> Eric Shelton, you know, he's a Louisville, Kentucky young man. He went to Florida State and found himself on third and 14, played a little special teams, didn't play much, but he came back to the University of Louisville. The thing I like about the guy is that he's strong enough, but he's got enough quickness to move forward. But I want to say one thing also. Remember, Bobby Petrino said to have a national championship team, you got to have a running team yes. first. Remember him saying that? Yes, I do. Yep. Okay. Officially gained of a yard. Second and nine. Rom, not known for the wheels, has shown him, delivered the blow as he took it out to the 39. Third and a couple coming up. Brown of seven there. Louisville running out of time, guys. This snap will come under five and a half. This is a must at least maintain the drive situation. I want to say something about the Brown family since I coached his father. The Brown family, the three brothers, never lost the high school football game they played in. <laughs> never. All three of them, including this young man right here. Ryan was the MVP of the state championship game three consecutive years. Third and two. First down catch for Montrell Jones down the sideline, way back out of bounds at the 46, but he gets it past Kelly Jennings. Pick up a 15. Here's Jill with an update from the Louisville side. That's right, Stefan LaForce, coach, you were asking, he got his bell rung in the second quarter. He did come out in the third quarter, but he wasn't all there. He's still hazy, so they took him out of the game and put Brian in. One of those Thank signs, you. Jill, is that he's not carrying his helmet. Usually it's a giveaway. When a guy doesn't have his helmet, the training staff has taken it away, taken it away yeah. from him. And this is where having Brian Brom ready to go and having him take real reps, at least give him a chance to come in and execute because of the experience he has in four games. Inside hand off Lionel Gates. He bounced off the hit and takes it deep into Miami territory. He bounced off another oh. hit and takes it to the 18-yard line. Greg Green has played well all year, but man, he was steamrolled by Lionel Gates. You have to understand that Greg Three is the number one tackler on the Miami Hurricane defense. He's a physical safety that likes to come up and hit the running back. That time, he did not only wasn't able to run up yeah. and support with the arms, but Lionel Gates has shown us tonight he's got more speed than any other back they have. Also, the power to go along with it. He's six foot two twenty five. You know where he's from? Jacksonville, Florida. They got a bunch big, of those big Florida plug for guys. Florida tonight, huh? Now, big plug for Florida, boy. Gates over hundred yards. He is hundred eight. Inside of five minutes, Brian Grimes throw complete to Broderick Clark. First and goal, Louisville at the two. A penalty marker down back where Brom is. Let's check it out. May have hit him after he got rid of it, which would move it down to the one. Personal foul, roughing the passer. 96 on the defense. Penalty will be half the distance to the end of the run. First down. If you were just joining us, where have you been? Yeah. Where have you been? Man, oh. this has been great, and it's going to get even better. Louisville fell behind 7 nothing. Two undefeated teams meeting. They scored the next 24. Led 24-7 at the break. The Orange Bowl was shot. Miami has charged back. They scored the last 20 to take the lead. The last one on a punt return for touchdown by Devin Hester. Now Louisville has it first and goal at the one with its backup quarterback, a true freshman, Brian Brown, in the game. Gates is the running back. Lionel takes it and takes it to the goal line and in for a Louisville touchdown. And the Cardinals with one of the great responses you'll ever see. With a young freshman quarterback who was four for four, 
37 yards and a seven yard scramble. I was wrong. I know he's in there because of the injury, but God, Lee, that Brian Brum is a player. Nine plays, 80 yards, three minutes and 41 seconds. And this is right after the huge return by Hester, where I think a lot of people thought finally Miami came back and took the lead. This one's over. Brian Brom and the Cardinals say, not so fast, my Not friend. fast, so I'm telling you. That was a huge, huge extra point, and the snap wasn't great. What a great job that was done there by Moody, the punter who just got beat because LaFors is out. The holder did a great job getting that down. Man alive. Now, Brock Berlin, who's been nothing short of brilliant in this fourth quarter, has to respond. It's 38 to 34. Stephon LaFords, if you just joined us, was great for two and a half quarters. Jill just told us his bell was rung. He fumbled here early in the fourth quarter, and he had to come off the field. Rahm has responded, and now Berlin, who has done a terrific job, will have to answer what Brian Brom just did on that drive. Can we play six quarters tonight? I don't want to leave. Just... <laughs> Here's Berlin's night. Well, Brock Berlin is, has turned this game around in the second half. First half had some trouble. Couldn't really make the throw that he had to make. Threw the ball into coverage. In the second half, they got him back in the shotgun. The team was down 24 to 7. He's been much more comfortable, much more accurate, and in command. Looking like he was going to move Miami ahead, which eventually they did with the return. And now he's got to do it one more time. And Coach Dan Werner did a very nice job in the, in the second half of mixing the run and the pass together. And I tell you what, if, if this situation ends up where well, Brom comes in and beats the number three team in the nation as a true freshman in the Miami Orange Bowl, that's what legends are made of, right? <laughs> and by the way, the greatest football player ever to play at the University of Maryland was my friend who passed away, Johnny Unitas. Yeah. Yeah. This kid's a great player, though. This, this guy, we, we've been talking all night about LaForce, but just seeing Brom, and I remember we had our conference call this week, first one of the, of the players to hop on. He's like, hey, guys, how you doing? Almost like a, a senior, a fifth-year senior would hop on a conference call. Just a certain confidence and aura about him, but still to come into this game like this oh. and perform the way he has is, is very incredible. You see Brock Berlin there with a private moment before stepping out of this huge stage as Devin Hester, who returned the punt for a touchdown, is set to get his hands on it. Brock Berlin is a Not very Christian. Good His faith has gotten him through all the trials and tribulations that come with the uniquely intense spotlight that is quarterback at Miami. Will Hester give him good field position? Let's see. From the 10. Reverses field. Reverses field again. Oh, he's got blocks here, guys. He's got blocks here. Hester hit it. He's across the 30 and pushed out of bounds at the 44 yard line. 34 in the return, a Miami team looking for a home run hitter. He got help that time by Anthony Reddick with a great block. With all these injuries they have at receiver, Hester played receiver last year. I'm trying to figure out why they've moved him over to play corner. Looks like Dante Hall here, just trying to find a seam. The blockers finally align themselves, and he hits the seam. What a special effort there by Hester to get them field position. One of the reasons why he moved the corner, because he wants to be like Deion Santos. I know, but I couldn't agree with you more. Dion played a few snaps on offense, by the way. Yeah, get Hester over there and let him make a big play out there at receiver. From the 44, Miami has two timeouts left. Berlin is flushed. He's running. And he's right at the first down mark. You talk about Brian Bromley and the yeah. Brom family never losing. Brock Berlin almost never loses. Our EA Sports look at Brock Berlin, 60 and 2 as a starter. When he was the USA Today Player of the Year out of Evangel Christian High School in Shreveport, he never lost. 15 and 2 in college, including that one start as a mighty Gator. Mighty Gator. And transferred here, 14 and 2 at Miami. At the Louisville 45. Berlin Roscoe Paris snuffed out, loss of one. Brandon Johnson, the second leading tackler for the season, top tackler tonight. Mike, you made a very important point that some of us just didn't pay attention to, but that extra point, that means you're right. They have to have a touchdown and not a field goal, and it's 38-34. Not only that, but when Brom gets the ball back, if Miami scores, <laughs> they just need the potential of a field goal to tie. 
Plenty of time on the play clock as you see. Four in the pattern. Berlin throws. Intercepted. That is the third time Kerry Rhodes has touched one. He picked off one. He nearly scooped one off the edge of the grass. And that one was right there. This game, in a nutshell, is why the Miami coaches can get so frustrated. At times, Brock Berlin makes every throw you ask of him. At other times, he just doesn't see defenders, tries to lock in on his guy because he thinks he's got Parrish, and he thinks he's got him behind oh. McCune, the linebacker, and he throws it right into the chest of Kerry Rhodes, the safety. If you drew a circle on there was five University of Louisville players in that area. How he didn't see him, I don't know. You're right. Third and ten. Could be in four-down territory here. Louisville adjusts the play before the snap. Berlin St. Louis. Oh, is complete for a first down and more to Lance Leggett with a penalty marker down in the secondary as well. Pickup of 26 to the 19. Let's see what this flag is going to be downfield. A uh, five-yard face mask to bring it to the 14. Face mask. Ladies defense. and gentlemen, Five it's the and same and quarterback that just made these two throws right into the pressure, and he puts it right on the chest of the freshman receiver leg. And look at that. Are you kidding me? That's the same guy from the previous play that threw it right into the chest to the safety. I like the way Leggett run that route. He went right down, drove him deep, came in. But the thing about it was sweet. He reached out and catch, caught it with his hands. Yep. Terrific play by Lance Leggett. Leggett, Parrish. And Jenkins are the receivers here. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage right here if he wants to try to hit the fade. Back up a little bit. Berlin pumps and throws for Jenkins. Couldn't pull it in. Berlin is throwing into the end zone with Jenkins. Rock Berlin this half, 14 of 19, 205 yards, couple of touchdowns. One, one point right here. We have not called the tight end's name in a while. 82, Greg Olson's in there. I would not be surprised if they didn't try to get him in somewhere into that end zone because he's a tremendous receiver at 6'5", 247. Tight end, this play. Not only that, Greg Olson. You know, they had Olson, Everett, the combination of the two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of those guys. I'm, I'm looking for him right now. They line up in the eye with one receiver. Tyrone Moss is the back. He gets it. And only gets Ooh. a yard or so. Mm. 42 to go. Mm. You're in four down territory. Oh, yeah, but you, four down but you don't want to waste the down. I understand. I just think you may treat that differently than second and ten. You may treat that as first down, knowing there's four. I'm just looking for something. All right. Uh, there, hang on. You're oh. hanging on at the end of a rope yeah. there. Akeem Jala caught a touchdown tonight. The sophomore from New Orleans is in the game. On third and nine, Harris and Jenkins at the bottom of the street. There Tight end, Everett See? caught it. He's three Mike, and a half yard shot. That's that, they should have done that. I'm saying not second. I, know, I, know. I wanted him to do that kind of play second. before yeah. on second down, not to get down to a fourth down. Play. Well, I think about taking the timeout here. Oh, talk yeah. about this. Yeah, sure you do. Because this is a play that could be your national championship hopes. Exactly. It's fourth. And let's call it four. With a minute 52 left. Be right back. It will summon you. It will challenge you. It will consume you. Combat Deception Online for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Rated M for Mature. Oh. Want to get away? Now you can. Go to Southwest.com for Southwest Airlines' $39 to $149 internet specials to 59 destinations nationwide. Purchased by October 21st. You are now free to move about the country.
Well, the national championship is always the goal for Miami. They've got the people and the program to do it. To keep national championship dreams in your own control, you've got to be perfect. And there's one play to do it. Fourth and four. Miami can get a first down at the Louisville four. Remember, this is a BCS play, maybe, from Louisville. Lance Leggett, bottom of the screen. The bunch formation at the top. Berlin, pressure, throws. It's complete. Right at the line. And very close to the first down with Jenkins. The spot is a correct one. That's where he got to. It's at the three. First and goal. What a huge pickup. Now a minute 46 left. Louisville has three timeouts. They may need to use them to keep some time on the clock. Well, they went with the bunch formation and just knew they had an opportunity there to rub a guy and bring him underneath. Jenkins has had a phenomenal game. We talked about the Miami Hurricane receivers stepping up, and Jenkins has done that tonight on that big fourth down. Taylor Humphrey is the fullback. Tyrone Moss the tailback. 100 seconds left. Miami three yards away from the lead. It is Moss, left side, pounding forward. Down to the one. Louisville's got to take timeouts. You can't get it with no time left. They've got a full complement. Showing a lot of confidence in his defense right now. Second goal. Three timeouts remaining for Louisville. Buck Ortega, another tight end, comes in. I don't understand not taking time out. Frank Gore comes in the backfield. He ran it in in overtime against Florida State. Will he get another big touchdown here this season? Here is Gore. Left side. Touchdown, Miami. for the extra point a 34 point second half Frank Gore two ACL injuries second big touchdown and now the freshman Brian Brown got to get him in field goal range can they force overtime 39 seconds left it will summon you it will challenge you it will consume you. Mortal Kombat Deception Online for PlayStation 2 and Xbox. Rated M for Mature. You can put a new twist in your toolbox for more torque in tight spaces or add a gripping idea for flawless accuracy and finishes. You can find the latest, most breakthrough tool innovations only at the Home Depot, like the Ryobi One Plus system, the only customizable combo tool kit with a universal battery. More people update their toolboxes at America's largest toolbox, the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Last two Brian Monroe kickoffs have been touchbacks. Will this one be returned? No. Knee taken by Broderick Clark. 80 yards to score the touchdown. We have a penalty marker down back at the kickoff spot. It should be offside on Miami. Re-kick it or take it up to the 25. Let's see. 56-yard drive there. Started by Hester's 34-yard kickoff return. Once Miami hit the fourth down, you just had, you could sense not only that they were close and they could score, but in the huddle, I was watching them break the huddle. They're smacking each other on the head. They knew that this game offensively was within their. He opened up that hole there for Frank Gore. And Chris Myers, number 77, was the first man to knock his man and create a hole, a pushback, allowed it to get to the middle. That's the senior, 6'5", 300-pound. Chris Myers. We're going to have a re-kick here. It'll take the penalty back five yards and kick it 
from the 30 gives us a second to remind you that Stuart Scott and Susie Colbert are standing by ready for Sports Center. as soon as we're done we'll look at those undefeateds in the Big Ten Wisconsin and Purdue hook up this week Michigan's at Illinois before they go to Purdue Eagles revenge the Eagles are playing the Panthers in the rematch of the NFC title game this year and of course the Panthers are struggling and of course Kurt Schilling's latest uh, with his ankle issue Sue and Sue's standing by for Sports Center. One thing about Arthur Comedy, his longest field goal so far has been 42 yards. So they've got to they got to have a nice drive. One row. This one's a bouncer. It's going to be hard to handle. Lionel Gates got his hand on it. They get past the 20 and about exactly where the penalty would have taken them to the 25. The old Orange Bowl. We started with you at the top of the show talking about the great moments that have happened here. Super Bowl three and Joe Namath. You can look around this stadium, and even if you've never been here, Kelly Winslow, I think that double overtime game ended up 41-38 the divisional playoff. The Flutie Hail Mary pass. Gerard failing in the end zone. He did find failing in the end zone. Miami and Howard Schnellenberger in the building tonight winning the national championship. This old building has stories to tell. Will the freshman Brian Brom write one more tonight from the 25? He's flushed. His pass is incomplete. 38 seconds remaining in the game. Louisville all three of its timeouts remaining. You see they've taken it a long way. Realistically, as yeah. Lee told you, they need about 50 kicker, yards, yeah. Mike. 42, you'd have to get down to about the 25 to get into that range. You'd probably kick it a little bit farther than that. Remember, all those drives were no sense of urgency. It's a lot different going on now when the crowd's in the game with 38 seconds ago. The urgency, and also Miami knows exactly what's coming. Protected, swing it out to Gates. Look out, Merriweather has a measure. Gates gets out of bounds to save time, but now it's third and long. It's third at about 17. He's saving time, and he lost about seven yards. I mean, you got three timeouts, you know, and there's nowhere to go there, but not a good-looking play there, as well as Bobby Petrino's called this game tonight. Not a, not a good play there for Brian Brom on second and 10. Now Louisville's going to take time out here with 31 seconds to go. We're going to have time. I'm sure they'll discuss it on SportsCenter afterwards, the impact of this game, and the game's not over yet. But you would certainly say coming away from this game, no matter what happens in the last 31 here, that Louisville has proven that they belong not just maybe where their ranking is, but even a little bit higher, perhaps. Never dreamed we've had a 41-38 game with the University of Miami's defense. I mean, never. I, I never dreamed that we would actually see Miami offense that's been banged up with injuries, that's been struggling to find any continuity, put 34 points up in the second half to put themselves in a position to win. I know the defense kept them around in the second half, but that offense has really stepped up, led by that quarterback, Brock Berlin. And again, some of the small things that happen in a game, Stephon LaForce mm -hmm. gets dinged in the second quarter, comes out in the third quarter. They scored. Remember, a fake punt did most of the work on that drive. Wasn't as sharp as he was. Credit some of Miami's defense. Who knows how banged up he was? And then a snap that he mishandles in the in the third leads to a Miami score. So special players for Miami. Right. Plus, what's yeah. happened here with Louisville? Hester. Yeah, that's the big one. Devin Hester. That's Devin Hester. Hester. He's the man. Changed the game. That's for sure. This huge punt return. Third and 17. Ra has to take off. Needs to get to the 35 for the first down. The 32 should take a timeout here with 22 seconds. Spun down one more to 21 remaining in the game. They've got fourth down. They need to get four for the first down. But after that, they need about 40 more yards. Big picture, anybody who's watching this game that might play Miami this year, especially the uh, the men that play in Charlottesville that have a quarterback that can hurt you with his arm and his feet. Miami, their biggest weakness is when they get into man coverage, a quarterback that can run can really hurt this defense down the road. Something to keep an eye on and see if Randy Shannon's able to make some adjustments because teams will look to exploit that as this year continues to move on for Miami. Fourth down here, guys. Couple of yards to get. They've been good in their short passing game thus yep. far tonight. Where do you think you want to go here? I'd go to number nine, Joshua Tinch. Somehow put him as a tight end position at 6'4. 
or 6'3", 215, and run him somewhere. But I would look definitely for number nine. He makes a good plays coming across the middle somewhere. I, I, I don't know if I'd look for a certain individual. I'd look for the matchup that I want one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to play man. The crossing routes have hurt Miami tonight quite a bit. The rub routes and crossing routes against man coverage. Throw the ball to number nine. Find him. Fourth down. Nobody over this guy. Brown took a low snap. Throws complete. They've got the first down and more out to midfield with Montrell Jones. Now, the guys, they need about 20 or 25 yards. 15 seconds. They have a timeout left. Clock starts. Brown kills it with 12 seconds remaining. Keep, yeah, it, keep in mind, guys, that the, the quarterback that's under center right now was not only getting ready for the homecoming dance, but also he was on the high school football field last year making his plays. Let's just make a point about Carmody. He's a redshirt freshman. His long's 42. High school last year, his long was 45 or two years ago. Excuse me. So you get somewhere around the 25 and the 30, you can take a shot. What win there is tonight will be into his face if he does get to kick. Miami takes a timeout to get its defense sorted. That's the Canes last. And there's one thing that, that they're going to try to do, obviously, Louisville. They will try, if at all possible, to save that last timeout so they can complete a pass, then call a timeout and get their field goal team in nice and smooth. They don't want to get in and have to spike the ball and run the kicker out and all kinds of things happen. Save that timeout, try to kick the winning field goal. Well, our Wrangler players of the game, the two starting quarterbacks, Stefan LaForce, 242 passing yards, three touchdowns, and Brock Berlin, who was just 9 of 16 for 93 yards in the first half, ends up with a 300-yard passing night and three touchdowns. Louisville has come in here and put up over 500 yards of total offense on the Miami defense. They need 22 more. <laughs> to get a chance to come out of here with a win. Miami has got to be able to put pressure on Rahm. He is so accurate as a thrower that if he has time to throw, he'll find a man open downfield. They're only rushing, rushing three. three and dropping eight. Twelve seconds left. Brian Brown steps up, feels the rush, has to get rid of it, threw it away. And now five seconds left. You may not have a chance to complete one long enough to get the timeout in the field goal unit. So this may have to go the distance. That's why Petrino's going to take his final timeout. Actually, a good change up there by Randy Shannon. It's the first time they've shown that, rushing three and dropping eight. They played so much of the four-man front and man under. Then Louisville's kind of got into sync with that coverage and that pass rush. Miami goes to North Carolina State next Saturday on ESPN. Then they continue into their ACC slate. The guys mentioned the game in Virginia. And they close with the Virginia Tech on ABC on championship Saturday. Whatever happens to the University of Louisville in this game, if they lose, they gain a lot of national prestige on national television with everybody in the country taking the number three team in the nation who at one time won 58 straight games in this place. Yep. The coach has lost one time in his four years here and take him to this battle, Kirk. No matter what happens, the University of Louisville wins this kind of situation, even if they don't win the game. Yeah, I think everybody, all of us, expected them to, to gain some respect because we thought they'd be competitive. But I don't know if anybody expected it to be this kind of performance with 41 points for Miami and 38 points for Louisville, especially the way both teams have kind of combated and back, gone back and forth here in the second half. Louisville's receivers, J.R. Russell, number three, Joshua Tinch, number nine, are both six foot three. Joshua Tinch is playing on the basketball team. He can go up and get it. He's coming over here with Russell. Well, yeah. we've seen the Hail Mary from this part of the field against Miami with Flutie. Does Louisville have a miracle? Rom loads up. The game is in the air. And it is taken away. Intercepted by Miami's intro roll. Russell took him down hard. There's pushing and shoving, and they are separated there. Miami wins it 41 to 38. A frustrated Russell is being taken by the officials and the rest of the Louisville folks away. And
Cottrell roll, and the Miami Hurricanes come up with a survival victory. Hopefully everything down there is staying cool. The Louisville players are trying to get in the middle there, and you see uh, the coaches of Louisville are all in the black shirts pushing their guys away. Russell went after roll. They've been going at each other all night, and the coaches here are doing a good job, and it's emotion for sure, but disgraceful that a great game like this has this as the closing scene because everything that college football is about tonight was displayed on this field. It was a wonderful, wonderful game. All right, let's see if Jill's down there with Brock Berlin. Jill? Brock, slow, frustrating first half. How did you turn things around? Your team scored 34 points in that second half. You know, I, first of all, I just thank the Lord. I thank God for, for this victory. What a great victory. And I uh, just thank him for this. But you know what? It just shows, again, the character of this football team. You know, we went at halftime. We talked about it. We've been in this situation before. And we, we just came out and made plays. And I'm just so proud of our guys. Louisville said they were coming in here not intimidated. That's how they played. How tough was this win? Uh, it was a tough win. That was a great football team, and I give them a lot of credit. But, uh, you know, I, I want to thank my offensive line. Those guys stepped up tonight. They played incredible. Gave me time to throw. Did it gave our backs time to run. And, you know, what a great victory for us. Congratulations. Enjoy the win, Mike. Thanks. Back to you. I mean, score on every possession in the second half and had a punt return as they put up 34 points to win this game. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, oh boy, great thriller, stuff. Right? Great game. Can we come here again sometime? Every time we come here. It's good old it's Orange Bowl. One of the best scenes of the year. Our final score, Miami 41, Louisville 38. We'll see you with Stewart and Susie on SportsCenter. With Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Jill Arrington, Chris Fowler, Mark May, Trev Alberts, Mike Tirico. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Good night from the Orange Bowl. See you in a minute as off we go to SportsCenter. Coming up next on SportsCenter, we're heading right back down to Miami, where the Canes pulled off a crazy second half comeback against the Cards. This is SportsCenter. Gone for game five, but is Schilling really gone for good? Why, it's not time to celebrate in the Bronx just yet. Early fireworks as the Cards try to keep their bats home cooking, while the Strohs look to split Bush with a split. Will the mighty be fallen while the road ahead only gets tougher for the nation's top teams? And an NFC Championship game rematch. T.O. with a big warning. Sports Center now. Much respect. Sports Center on deck, yeah. <laughs> Stuart Scott, Susie Calber, a huge preseason game in the country of a billion people. Game two of the NLCS, and guess what? Something's bigger than all that. That's right. How about that? Miami Orange Bowl mystique now. Canes own the number one scoring defense in football, but Louisville brought the best offense Miami had faced. Number 17 at number three, both teams undefeated. How about Louisville trying to overcome some history? 12 straight losses in the state of Florida. Louisville had been up 17 twice. Fourth quarter, they're up 31-27. David Hester takes the Cardinal punt, and he is gone. 78 yards for the score. Miami's fifth non-offensive touchdown of the year. Miami up 34-31. Good team's answer. First and goal for Louisville. Lionel Gates takes it in. Cardinals take the lead, 38-34. Under two minutes to play, Miami driving. Fourth and four at the Louisville 8. Rock Berlin to Darnell Jenkins. He's got the first down. Frank Gore had been kept pretty much in check for most of the game against the Louisville D. Can he barrel his way in? Yes! And Miami is up 41-38. But remember Doug Flutie. Boston College, a desperation here. This time, it's Brian Brom. Can he be the hero as he puts it in the air? Knock it down! Or intercepted! Now Roll brings it in as Miami holds on. Louisville, 505 total yards, 226 rushing. Miami with 420.
Perfection was the order of the day. With national dominance on the line, the Trojans appeared very presidential in their showdown with the perfect Sun Devils. While the Big Ten unbeatens were in the hands of a Heisman hopeful and the best badgering defense in the land. The Sooners had two goals, maintain perfection and avenge last year's stinging defeat to K-State. In the ACC, plenty of cavalier attitude as Virginia tried to reach a new level, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the ACC's biggest bully. All that, plus historic successes and inconceivable failures on College Game Day Finals. Saturday. College Game Day Final is presented by Pontiac. Turning the corner into the second half of the season, 13 unbeatens remain. Glad to have you with us on College Game Day Final. Reese Davis alongside my good friends Trev Alberts and Mark Mayne. Guys, really a Saturday in which you could say some contenders were separated from some pretenders. Well, it's mid-October. Like you mentioned, no more hiding weaknesses. Everybody knows about everybody now. Well, there's a major pretender in the ACC and a contender, so we're going to have to wait and see and find out. Who but in is. the Big Ten, one of the matchups, one of two matchups on this Saturday between unbeaten teams. Wisconsin and Purdue, the Boilermakers with that high-powered offense, Badgers with the best defense in the land. Joe Teller, in fact, said of Wisconsin's front four, I've never seen a defensive front four like this one. Brent Bielema, the defensive coordinator, had his charges ready. Kyle Orton feeling the heat going down, but one of those guys on the front four, Jonathan Welsh, injures his leg on this play. Right there, just gets the, the right knee rolled up upon and just terrible for that defensive line of Wisconsin, but not terrible here. Look at Anthony Davis getting around the right end, break a couple tackles of speed down the sideline, 33 yards for Anthony Davis. And that was half of his rushing total on the day. He picked up seven more here, puts the Badgers up seven to nothing. On kickoff return by Purdue was snuffed out by Erasmus James. James was wreaking havoc. He forced Orton into an interception in the game. But then on this play, dead ball, James got cut down, injured his leg, tried to return, but lasted just one play. Battered and bruised front line, Orton went to work, finding Charles Davis to tie it at seven. John Stocko standing in and finding the wide open George Hall. George Hall plays for Purdue, so that's a problem. That would set up a Ben Jones field goal. Boiler up, boiler up on homecoming, up 10-7. Now, Orton really hurt the Badgers running, gets outside here. And he gets outside probably because he rasped Miss James, who would have been in that position, is on the sideline with an injury, Reese. Now, down 17-7, Mark. Here comes John Stocko. Go to Brandon Williams. Nice job by Stockel standing tall in the pocket, making great decisions with the ball. And here, perfect pass protection. Look, he goes to his third outlet right here. And Booker Stanley, and he bulls his way into the end zone. 17 14 now. And Orton, I mentioned he hurt the Badgers running on a third down play, going for the first. The ball is loose. And as you see, when the hand touches down, he's not down. Ball clearly out. They looked at it, and John Starks, or John Scott Starks, pardon me, picked it up, ran it in for a touchdown. So now Orton is trying to lead his team back in the waning moments. First he hit Bryant, then he hit Kyle Ingram for 16 yards. Now Ben Jones to force overtime. And he's wide to the right. Jones, the fine Purdue kicker. That was from 42 yards out. Prior to that kick, he had been 11 for 11 in his career from 40 to 49 yards, but it was not to be. Purdue knocked from the ranks of the unbeaten, and Wisconsin able to move on. Still unbeaten, 7-0 overall, 4-0 in the Big Ten, thanks largely to the heroics of Scott Starks, who returned that fumble for a touchdown. He spoke with Holly Rowe. I mean, teams go through a lot of, lot of adversity during the year. We just happen to have a lot of adversity this game, but we overcame it. What does it say about this defense to hold this Purdue offense in check? We're the best in the nation. Statistically, <laughs> and certainly by the way they handled that Boilermaker offense, I don't think there's any question at this moment that they have the right to claim that. There are others who would dispute it, but they've been very, very good. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Herbstreet were out in West Lafayette for the Big Ten battle. Joined by Barry Alvarez of these 7-0 Badgers moving up in the polls. You guys down 10 last week at Ohio State early. Down 10 here at Purdue late. 
Is this the most resourceful, hungriest team you've had in a while? This team uh, finds a way to get it done, and uh, they've got a little, there's a little something about this team. I, I noted during two a days, I said there's a spirit with this team. They they want to play, they like each other, uh, and they're hungry. You know, coach, we've seen you play twice now, and Erasmus James is the best football player on the field every game we've seen. How does he compare with the other great ends that you've had? He's the best defensive lineman that we've had. Wow. And, and as many years as I've coached, I've never had one quite like Raz. Coach, your defense is obviously going to keep you in every game you play. The development of John Stocko to go along with Anthony Davis. Can you talk about how he's matured? These last two weeks have been huge yeah. for him and your offense. He, he grew up at Ohio State. We try to protect him early. We try to live off of our defense. Uh, the running game put the pressure on everyone else. But we've given him a little more each game, and I think the last two games in hostile environments, he's really stepped up. Yeah, I can't believe he's the same quarterback we saw against Man, wow. Amazing growth for this guy. Now your Badgers are 7-0. Oh. you got four games to go. Is this the kind of team that's going to overlook a Northwestern or a Minnesota coming in or one of the road games? We've got a motto. It's 1-0. Oh. You know, I have a rule. You have 24 hours. When you win a game, you celebrate. You have 24 hours to celebrate, but it's 1-0. Oh. Let's be 1-0 oh this week, and our kids have bought into that motto. When it comes to this conference, you've been around a long time. You're becoming one of the deans of this conference. What's the key in not only 1-0, but just blocking out? There's going to be a lot of hype now about Wisconsin running the table. What's the key in being able to block all that out and staying focused on each week? Well, if you get too far ahead of yourself in this league, you're in trouble because we've seen it happen so many times. There are so many dangerous teams. It just won't happen. You, you can't win a championship if you get too far ahead of yourself. Your impression of Kyle Horton, the quarterback, from Purdue. You played against him a couple of years now. I'm impressed with how smart and, intel and an intelligent player he is. He does a nice job of knowing where he's going to go with the ball before the snap. He's out there 15 seconds beforehand, sees where everyone lines up, then makes his call. Our guys did a nice job of, uh, of stemming, but he really has a lot of composure. And his second year in a row, he's moved the chains on us with his feet. <laughs> Had the key fumble, of course, he returned for a touchdown. They just missed the field goal. I know you didn't want another overtime game <laughs> in this situation. Step back and look at this Big Ten conference now, which conference has been kind of bashed nationally, but Michigan's coming on. You don't have to play them this year. Well, I, I think our league is very strong top to bottom. I, I do. I said that uh, when the season started and, and watching games. I see Michigan State getting better, Iowa getting better. I think our league is very strong. It's Erasmus James okay? The game changed when he got cut blocked and got knocked out of the game. Is he okay for next week's well, game? Well, I hope so. He told me uh, he was walking uh, on that ankle afterwards. He thought he'd be, be okay. And John Welsh got knocked out also. So we lost both of those guys. Uh, made it, changed our, it changed our game plan. Badgers are 7-0. Yep. Going to be well into the top ten. Headed home with four games to go. Take them one at a time, Coach. Thanks for your time. We Thanks, appreciate guys. it. Wisconsin, one of the stories of the half season. And when they take them one at a time, none of those one at a time games involves a match with Michigan. Wisconsin doesn't have to deal with the Wolverines. Badger defense certainly able to keep them in against anybody they play, Trev. Wisconsin, Reese, really reminds me of Ohio State from a couple years ago when they won the national championship. A dominating defense, dominating front four, a good running game, and a quarterback who just makes plays. But the analogy goes even further. Remember back then, Ohio State didn't have to play Iowa, the two of them playing so well. Now Michigan playing so well in the Big Ten. Wisconsin not playing Michigan. It's time, Big Ten. Either add another team or play a championship game. I'd hate to see this Big Ten race go all the way down to the end. And who's better? Is it Michigan? Is it Wisconsin? But clearly both of them playing very well right now. I'd like to give kudos to defensive coordinator Brett Belima. I'll tell you, Belima, he's done an outstanding job with this defense. And not only that, it's the way that they play today. They lose their best pass rusher in the game and their best player on defense. And the key was that how do they combat that? But the rest of the defense rules the occasion. We talked about the four down pass rushers that got the quarterback Kyle Orton. But the other key is the rest of the defensive secondary. They were able to drop seven players, go into zone coverage, try to Confuse the offense, and I think that was key in his football game. But the defensive secondary, they played great coverage today. I saw those guys in the defensive secondary knock down balls, cover wide receivers. That's something you don't see against this Purdue offense because those wide receivers in man coverage, they make that quick break, those quick slants. But Wisconsin defense rose to the occasion today. I was very impressed by them. Well, you guys have dubbed Bielema as the early leader for the Frank Broyles yeah. Assistant Coach of the Year Award. He's done a great job. Well, another team that's off to a great start is Virginia. We talked to Al Groh on Friday. I asked him what it would mean to Virginia to finally beat Florida State. He said it would mean that we were 3-0 in the ACC. 
Well, there's some more history to deal with there. The Seminoles 49-1 in ACC games at the Doak, and Virginia had never beaten a top-10 team on the road. And Ernie Sims, who was talking a little jump during the week, saying Heath Miller, the tight end, wouldn't get anything on it. Ernie storms in there and blocks a putt for a safety. 2-0 Knowles. What about the development of Wyatt Sexton finding Profondo Thorpe? Just cover two right there, finding the seam in between the safety and the corner. Great job by Wyatt. And once again here, Wyatt just stepping up right in the middle of the field. Beautiful pass right there to Chauncey Stovall. But it always helps when you can get a running game going. Lorenzo Booker right here gets some great blocking, but look at the nifty footwork right in there, and he plows his way into the end zone for the score. Florida State's up 12 to nothing. FSU behind Sexton, who threw for a career-high 275 yards. Nice Chauncey Stovall, 19-0. And that defense had to deal with the fifth-best offense in the country, and they stuffed them. Alvin Pierman gets nothing and likes it. And try it again, same deal. Michael Johnson got three tailbacks. Not only fifth overall offense, they were fifth in rushing. And they were dominant. Marcus Hagens, meanwhile, who's the fourth most efficient passer in the nation, snowed under. And this offensive line had given up only two sacks coming into this game. That front four of Florida State dominated Virginia's front offensive line. And what about Lorenzo Booker, Mark? Well, look at the running here. I mean, right between the tackles, that's what he was able to do the entire day. He had a huge day here. And he picks up plays on the outside and picks up additional line. Look at the blocking down the field to play. He was key to this offense. And then when you get the ball inside the 10-yard line, you give it to Booker again. He rolls in for the score. Booker carried it 15 times, went for 123 yards, and this thing was not close. 36 to 3. I mentioned the good statistics that Virginia had coming into the game on the season. That is not the case when they face Florida State. Guys, in the last four meetings with the Seminoles, Virginia has been outrushed 1,087 to 111. Yeah. Basically, they outrushed them 10 to 1. That's a lot. That is a lot. 36 to 3 in the final. Wyatt Sexton strong again. 21 to 26. The big day for the new Seminole leader. And he discussed his motivation against the Cats. Uh, coming into this game, you know, Trev Alberts and those guys were talking about how, you know, I wouldn't be able to handle the blitz and stuff like that. But the blitz wasn't an issue with my offensive line tonight. And they, you know, they made things easy for me out there. It's good Boy, to know is, that everybody's watching, isn't it? This is a tough week for Trevi. <laughs> you know, I, I, I got to tell you, Wyatt, you're absolutely right. I was absolutely wrong about this game. And Wyatt Sexton deserves a lot of credit, 21 of 26. But I got to take my hat off to Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator. We've been very critical of Jeff Bowden, his play calling, those sort of issues. This was the Florida State offense that we had heard about and expected to see all season long. Irons at tight end in the middle of the field, running the football. I think they got a quarterback now who's reading. The, why are you laughing at me? Uh, I'm not, I'm just I just thinking, got dissed by Wyatt no, I'm going to tell you something. I think Wyatt should be nice to you. Yes. Because you've said a couple of times, too, it shows you how people pick out what they want to hear. You wonder why Wyatt wasn't playing from yeah, the first why, game. Yeah, Wyatt, I'm season. saying, why weren't you in there the whole year? <laughs> Terrific game, Wyatt. But how about Florida State's defense? I mean, what Mickey Andrews was able to do to this offense, he just stuffed the run. Virginia couldn't get off the line of scrimmage. That was very impressive. He took this offense, and he took Marcus Higgins out of what they wanted to do, their comfort zone. In those second and seven, second and eight situations, they couldn't operate their offense. They are entirely put back on the heels of this offense. And the key was they wanted to get to Heath Miller. They got to him in the second half, got him the ball a few times, but it just wasn't enough. And if you look at this offense for Virginia, they have to run the ball to be successful. They don't have a quarterback in Marcus Higgins that can sit back in the pocket and throw it 30 times a game and win. I, he said it too. I did not. Why? They just I did not. They put it on record. I never said that. You know what? It's a gift. You're a lightning rod. It's a gift and a curse. It's something that you have to learn to balance. Whatever. You know, when we continue here on College Game Day Final, we'll see who else Trev motivated. Perhaps the freshman from Michigan has found some motivation, or maybe the freshman from Oklahoma, and words that Mr. Alberts has shared over the course of the season. Maybe Matt Leinert, maybe the reason Matt Leinert is a Heisman Trophy candidate is because somewhere along the line, Trev said he didn't like the way he combed his hair 